Folks, welcome. This one is for you today, tonight, this weekend, whenever you are listening or watching this. How the heck is everybody doing? Come on in, come on in. Everybody is welcome here. We are recapping Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 12. Welcome to hell. We are allegedly two episodes away from the finale, uh, and then we'll get into the, the reunion. Uh, I'm guessing a three-episode reunion. If they're greedy, they'll push it for four. Maybe we'll get a Secrets Revealed episode. Who knows? Um, <laughs> we'll see. But this week's episode, you know, not as bad as last week's episode. A little confusing, a lot meta, very meta. We bring podcasting back up to the forefront where it should be because Bethany Frankel has entered the chat. We finally are discussing the Bethany Frankel, the artist formerly known as Raquel Rachel Levis podcast. They will not say Bethany's name, which good. It must just eat Bethany Frankel alive that they are not saying her name. Now, what I'm doing just to make myself feel better about my life choices, every time they talk about oh, that podcast, I like to pretend they're talking about so bad it's good. Like, oh, listen to this podcast today. Oh, it's crazy, dude. They, I just think it's talking about me. It's so exciting. Finally, finally, it's all happening, as Sheena Shea would say. How are you guys doing? Are you good? What did you think of this week's episode? Um, hands down, the best scene of this episode, which I cannot wait to get to, is DJ James Kennedy versus Tom Zanzival. I mean, that scene at... Tom's practice hanger. However, man, maybe we do need to cut back on some of the financials. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, it's a, it's a big hanger for your band to uh, rehearse in. But that was the best scene. I mean, my God, DJ James Kennedy cleared that man. I mean, it was no scraps left. He ate Sandoval alive. And it's almost, it's just, un, it's not, I was about to say it's unfair, but it is just funny. I mean, my thesis statement all season has been what a waste for Tom Sandoval just because he still clearly does not understand anything that he has caused, anything that he has been a part of. And he is still looking at it as such a weird angle that I truly look forward to the day where he is able to sit with himself and quiet all of the outside voices, maybe, and actually start to put it together and start to realize that the people around him make more sense than what his mind is telling him. Uh, because at, at a certain point, it is sad to watch. It, it just is. And I think what scares me is that you see resent, uh, you know, the resentfulness build up, the anger build up. I mean, my God, the man is wearing a leg knife. I mean, it went from funny to real scary in this episode when he's like, hey, dude, do you like this leg knife? Yeah. You like these shorts I'm wearing? Yeah. Very close up to uh, on my thigh shorts. But the, the, the main thing is just so you can see my leg knife. You're wearing a leg knife and talking about cutting your dog in half? Let's dial it back. Rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. My goodness gracious golly oh my. It was really weird. What a weird moment, which we'll get to all of those moments today. Um, the Vanderpump multiverse ecosystem, the industrial Vanderpump complex that has been created, as I've always said this season, it's not just the show anymore, right? It's the show. It's the after show. It's Sheena's podcast. It's Jackson Brittany's podcast. It's Sensible's podcast. It's Rachel's podcast. It's all, it's Katie Maloney's podcast and whatever. Uh, Katie was on Danny's podcast. Today, I mean, there's all of these things that you have to take into account for. I mean, and some of it just like completely batshit, uh, speculative nonsense. But then some of it, you, you gotta like, oh man, it's it it gives you this full 360 view that I always argue that I wish the show could get ahead of because sometimes I feel like we're not obviously seeing. Oh, also Lala's podcast, obviously, so we're not seeing the entirety of the picture. So it's a really weird time to be a Vanderpump Rules fan because you have to live in some sort of virtual reality where you are checking in with like 3 billion podcasts, 2,600 Reddit threads, a couple of memes, and, uh, you know, uh, all of the bars. 
all of the bars. You got Tom Tom, Schwartz and Sandys. Who knows about something about her? In fact, I also like, listen, not a popular opinion, I'm sure. I don't give a rip if this place ever opens in my life. I got merch. I'm happy to have merch. Fuck. I love it. <laughs> merch will probably be worth more if the, the shop never opens. I love sandwiches, but I also love pizza. I don't care. I'm good. I'm good. But I'm sure we'll get the answers to that at the reunion. So uh, I am not holding my breath. Now, the fun thing is uh, this week I did uh, Sheena Shea's Shenanigans. I'm back on Shenanigans. Uh, I think it's released this Friday. Now, there are a couple of things in this podcast that we said or that was said that I think will be cut out so I cannot reveal. There were a couple of things that I learned that I don't think I'm going to be able to talk about yet because I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want Sheena upset. I don't want to get anybody pissed at me. But there was one thing I can't wait to talk about because it gave me a little bit more of a picture potentially of where some of the people might be coming from and uh, something, you know, also involving Ariana that, that uh, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that actually makes a little bit more sense. Um, so we'll see. Uh, also right out of the gate, Lala, it was very interesting doing Sheena's podcast and trying to explain my feelings a little bit on Lala because I know Sheena and Lala are so tight. I was really ticked off at Lala last episode, but this episode to me, it was like, I like seeing Lala get into motherhood. I like that. She's amazing. at it. it's like the one thing that I'm like, Oh, I completely agree with that. I have no pro like I love seeing the uh the process of picking the sperm donor. Um to me, that is a very real kind of fun scene. There's not a lot of joking that I can do in that. Uh, in that I, I think there's really true, pure intentions behind that. And to me, that is I mean, listen, we'll we'll quibble a little bit about uh, Lisa, can I have the party at your place tomorrow? And there's no way that just happened. And it's just like, oh, I guess we'll just put something together in less than 24 hours. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I get infuriated with, with reality TV. It's like, we already knew it was going to be at Villa Rosa. That was already in the books. Um, but that's the stuff where I kind of really see at heart, you know, who Lala at her best is. So it was nice to have a week where she wasn't just what I feel as shitting all over Ariana. And to me, that's why I'm really curious these last couple of episodes leading into and the reunion of maybe it will help us and me understand why we get to the point in Talking Heads where she is just slagging Ariana off. Um, the Vanderpump Rules After Show, which I am a big proponent of, uh, also, this week breaks down the financial situation with Ariana and Tom's house. Ariana says exactly what she's been saying all along. And it is so funny because we are so quick to jump down her throat about not getting out of the house and what she's doing. And, and you know, she's kind of said these things all along, but it's really interesting in the after show because she just has all of these facts to back it up. And these facts about home loans and refinancing homes and things that a lot of us have no flipping idea of because we will never be able to own a house in our lives. Thank you, government. How dare you, tax day? Um, but uh, this episode, I, I got to tell you too, Joseph, I miss you, girl. Girl, I know it's been a long time, but I've missed you on my TV screen this last week with your kooky antics and you talking about killing your pet turtle as a kid. I miss you, girl. Come back to the show. Please, please come back. We do know we see Joseph at the reunion. I'm sorry, AKA Kaylee, her real name. Now, this past weekend, I did a full, way too long recap of the Rachel Goes Rogue podcast with Joseph, which I thought was very interesting. You know, what's interesting about all of these podcasts, it'll give you the fuller picture, but you also got to realize what you're not hearing. My big problem with the Bethany Frankel podcast with Rachel was all of the stuff that was left to the side, put to the side, not like good questions asked because Bethany did no research. Bethany didn't walk, watch the show. She had her own agenda that she was trying to push with the reality reckoning of it all, where I think she just kind of lost the plot with one of the main things about doing podcasts is to try to entertain, to try to inform, to try to let the listener or the viewer in on something. 
you know, and you had such a good opportunity and I feel like it was a swing and a huge miss. So it's really exciting in this episode that we get to see their reactions to this episode. And if you watch the after show, they go even deeper into those reactions, which I thought that to me was fascinating. To me, that was like, okay, now I feel like I'm getting a complete experience, but it was such a letdown at the time. I was like, this is such a huge opportunity that Bethany got this and it's going to be number one regardless just because of the topic and the person, but it would have been such a great moment if she had done her research and been able to answer some of the questions that at the time when this was like July or August that we were dying to know that we were dying to know. We'll also get into Rachel uh, kind of losing the plot more and more as she goes on with her podcast and her social media posting. Uh, we'll go into how she literally had four clips edited ready to push out on her Instagram the moment Vanderpump Rules episode hit the airwaves yesterday. So that was wild. And I would love to know who over at Evolution or Bravo is the leak that got Rachel these episodes early. Like, is everybody working in conjunction at this point? Because I, the thing, the thing is, is that like, this keeps the whole thing going. You know, it's like, like I said, everybody here is making some sort of money, even Tom Sandoval, even Raquel, they're all making money. But like, I'm curious who is giving Rachel access to these episodes early. Now I will get access to certain episodes early at times, but I'm always very, uh, I'm very careful to not reveal anything beforehand. I don't want to get in trouble. I've done that. Like when I first started, I got into a couple slip ups because I was a rookie and I didn't know and I got too excited, but I really try to protect those relationships of anybody that gives me that stuff. In fact, I put up a TikTok of me reacting to a TikTok and an Instagram of me reacting to that DJ James Kennedy Tom scene. And I had already done that like the day before. And then I released once the episode fully aired because I just didn't want to get anybody in trouble at all. Like I'm very, very aware of that. But Rachel was like, boom, 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 boom. And I am curious who over there is giving her access to these things. I think that is a huge betrayal unless that's part of it too. And I don't hate, I really hate to get conspiratorial, but maybe that's a thing of like, yeah, let's the more, the more people are talking about it, the better who cares about the emotional upheaval, but the more, the better. But I do worry about Raquel's meant Rachel's mental state at a certain point, because you're defending something that is starting to get where it's like indefensible in some ways. Like I was with you on a lot of these things, but now we're quibbling and semantics over these little like line readings and things that you see said that eventually you just have to own. And the fact that like you keep pushing, but like it's starting to me, make her look worse where I thought she was like leveling out and you just don't want to give, I don't know, like at a certain point it's let the mouse go. And I am curious even for Rachel and her podcast, which I'm sure it'll be totally fine. But like, where are we going to go for her after this show finishes this season? Like, is it going to become like what she said initially on the Bethany Frankel podcast, that it was going to be a podcast about mental health? Are we going to get back to that land? Or is it going to be like, well, let's start with season one of Vanderpump Rules and see what I think about it. And I think there is this, not to use a Schwartz phrase, of getting lost in the sauce. And, you know, at a certain point, you're defending actions that you made, whether it was completely groomed and manipulated by Tom Sandoval. You still played a part in it. And for you to consistently quibble over these same things that were again and again, I feel like this time it just really made her look very bad. And there are some things, cause I know she listens to clips here and there. So Rachel, if you're listening, I do encourage you to keep going as a podcaster, but I also want you to answer like fully things. Like I said with Joe, what a huge missed opportunity of talking about your experience with Joe when you were hanging out with Schwartz and Sandoval while he was still still dating with Ari dating Ariana. Now Schwartz did a lot of uh, podcasts and, and media interviews, Watch What Happens Live, Nick Vialli, all of these people this week. And more uh, more revelations were left where he said, yes, Joe was aware of the Sandoval-Rachel relationship you know, but it was to the extent that she wanted to know. It was like, and in her head, Sandoval had already pumped the narrative out that he was breaking up with Ariana. So that seems to be the narrative that had been put out by Sandoval and Schwartz. So Joe, they're not talking about this, but Joe, 
must have believed like, oh, he's breaking up with Ariana or has already broken up with Ariana. But for her to say he was not, she was not aware, that's just not the truth. And if you're going to have us, you know, if you're trying to get not trying to get empathy, but if you're trying to tell your story about your relationship with Schwartz and potentially him breadcrumbing you and leading you along, you do have to add in other things to give the full picture about time and place. That's just my opinion, but it makes your other things, it makes us a little wary or at least me a little wary when I'm like, well, you're not being fully honest about the entirety of the situation. And when you were in this love bubble with Schwartz, the other things that were happening around you, because you, Sandoval, Raquel, and uh, Schwartz were all kind of this gang that you could hang out together because you all knew this little secret. And uh, it's interesting. And also, this episode, not to look too deeply into it, but that's what we do here because we are so deep, is, uh, is thinking about love, is thinking about does Tom Sandoval, in his mind, really truly believe he was in love with Raquel or... Is he doing this because it's it's a way to garner empathy? It's a way to absolve himself potentially of his sins. It's a way to say, okay, well, the reason I did this was it was real love. And it's made me think so much about love this week because love, you know, there's that infatuation love and that, that time of, you know, when you're in love and you're just all hot and bothered by each other and you can't get enough. But then there's like, love that builds over time and there's love that actually builds with trust and there's something about then having a partner for years upon years and we see that you know with ariana and tom but it is interesting because his kind of got uh cock blocked by his indiscretion by getting caught but he was still in that phase of oh dude i'll do anything but it's hard that he can't even listen to like oh yeah at the end of the day i was a little horny dude it was like pretty awesome like i was sneaking over to her place we were like hooking up in front of hippie the dog dude it was insane for him to not like start to really seriously think about that and think okay maybe i was misjudging everything Maybe I was, maybe this isn't exactly what love is. It's a form of love, but obviously it isn't real. And when you see the pain that it caused these other people, it kind of adds more strikes against it. And then on top of it, to compliment Raquel a little bit, I, now I'm fascinated with calling her Raquel because that's what they keep saying, Raquel. Um, Rachel is that Rachel went to a facility and was around mental health professionals that actually got her to understand the severity of the situation and where she was coming from. But it is interesting that this episode tries to paint Raquel into this person that is almost a black widow, the kiss of the spider woman. She did it to DJ James Kennedy and now she did it to Sandoval. Thank God she wasn't on another season or poor Kin Todd would have been in the mix. Can I love you? Don't, I don't want to go in the jacuzzi with you, Raquel, please. I'm a happily married man. I just like to carry around my dogs with me. Please don't. I can't believe that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they paint us this. And it, it is funny when Sandoval is trying to make us feel, I mean, it's not funny, but it's inherently funny in a sense that Tom Sandoval is trying to turn like, you should feel bad for me, dude. My heart's broken the whole time. He's been hooking up with other people. Remember Billy Lee's friend? Remember all the girls that have come out since saying, oh yeah, I hooked up with him over the summer. So like emotionally, he was still connected to Raquel, but penis wise, connected to many other people in the West Hollywood Valley Village area. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, dude, I guess I have to finally give up. I mean, I haven't sleeping with people the last couple of months, but I was still hanging my hat on Raquel. I wasn't able to give my heart away. Just my massive, awesome semen. Yeah. Please remember to rate me five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, folks. Woohoo! Uh, oh, also, guys, we're doing a Patreon Live today, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that we can talk about anything. Usually, this is really fun. You can say anything you want in the chat. We can we can talk about Vanderpump. We can talk about Summer House. Oh, my God, you guys. I talked to uh, Jesse Solomon from Summer House today, and it was a hysterical uh, it was a really funny, funny interview. So if you're loving Summer House this season, like I am, I think you're going to get a kick out of that because I certainly got a kick out of that. I had to cut something out, unfortunately, because of Bravo, but it was a really, really a funny interview. But I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Like I never am loving 
talking about the show anymore because it just takes up so much space in my brain. But it is one of those things where like leading up to this, and I know this is just my mental illness, where it's like such a, it's not like, wait, like I got to talk about it. I got, and the whole day I'm like, oh no, no. And I'm watching the episode again and again, trying to find these little things and little moments and scrolling around all the Vanderpump news. And it just sometimes feels so much. So I love when we get to, to Wednesdays where we get to start so I can purge all of this from my brain and just try to forget about it and like eternal sunshine it from my memory oh also you guys tonight taylor swift's uh, new album comes out it leaked online today and people are so damn harsh on twitter people are like oh she didn't eat with this one so it is interesting people when you are that successful they are just out to hate you immediately you have to like legitimately prove yourself time and time again but it is interesting to think if taylor swift at the height of her powers could release a stinker. I have high hopes for it. I, uh, I'm i very excited to listen to it. I'm still listening to Beyonce's album. I'm listening to Waxahachie's new album. Listen to Karunga Ben, Vampire Weekend. We've had so much good new music lately. Listen to Sheena Shea's new uh, hit song, Apples. There's so much good music out there lately. But uh, yeah, that's tonight as well. So we got a big entertainment weekend coming up. You got, oh my gosh, I'm going to see uh, Fish. Yeah, I'm going to see Fish, baby. I'm wearing my fish lid. We're seeing Fish at the Sphere this weekend in uh, good old LV Las Vegas. So that should be that should be fun. I wonder if Austin and Shep will be there. But uh, if you're going to the Sphere to see Fish, please let if you if you see me, let's say hi. Let's talk some Vanderpump before these guys get into a 40 minute jam or something. Um, also, uh, programming, you know, we will be catching up on the Valley finally on Friday's episode. So tune in for that. I think the Valley is killing it. I am so invested, which is always a great sign for a new show. Like I'm legitimately enjoying, I mean, enjoying, enjoying is a hard word because it's really rooted in misery, but I am, I think it's got legs. I think it's got momentum. I think this thing could be really interesting and it's its first season. So Remember, Vanderpump Rules didn't even really take off until its second and third season. So they're in a really good spot right now. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. And uh, I, I really do enjoy talking about it because how do you not enjoy talking about Jax and Kristen Doty? I mean, it is so much to rage against the machine with, with Jax especially. And Chris, you know, being an empath myself, like Miss Kristen Doty, it is uh, it, it is fun to watch her. But it is funny when you can tell a show as its punching bag, you know, is that they will flat out troll Kristen so hard with flashbacks in that show that it is like, man, you know, like she is giving it all for us. And it's so like, they have so much to troll her about every episode. Well, they'll do a clip. Like, I wonder if Dodie knew going in that they would like use old footage of Vanderpump rules and just roll like in the same thing with Jax. But I think Jax is more oblivious, like, F you, whatever, it's AI, it's not even me, it's a character I play on TV. But Dodie, there is some kind of protectiveness, I feel, for her, where it's like, man, it is, why but it's interesting to see how these cast dynamics and the Michelle Lally and Jesse Lally scene with who is this director from the Chateau Marmont she is potentially hooking up with. You know, I've heard Quentin Tarantino, I've heard Michael Bay, somebody said Spike Jones. I personally think it's Michael Bay, but who knows, we'll find out. And if you know a Bravo audience member, that information shall be revealed. Okay, let's get into this folks. Finally, Vanderpump Rules season 11, episode 12. How'd you like them apples? Boom, love the title because Sheena Shea, but you know Sheena loved the title of this. She's like, oh my God, that is my song. That is my hit song, Apples. Uh, we talked about Drake's rap, di like, you know, his diss records he's been releasing, which I did get a lot of uh, uh, feedback on that I did not put first that Drake didn't fire the first shot in the rap battles. So I'm sorry I did not go into that completely, but guys, Drake didn't fire the first shot. But I do like that Sheena is potentially the Drake of Vanderpump Rules is putting out diss tracks in response to real life actual events. This is the description the cable company gives us. A podcast rehashing the past sends everyone spiraling. So the, in my head, it's like so bad it's good. That's rehash it. Like that's me right there, but it's actually Bethany Franco's podcast. But I love the podcast gets like the the second letter of the, the whole description, how, how far we've come. Uh, Sheena releases a new song. Lala takes the step towards expanding her family. Allie and James have a tough conversation and Sheena and Sandoval clash over a 
perceived betrayal. Now, this is a great, I guess, recap, but you don't have DJ James Kennedy Sandoval, which for me was the whole scene that would, that was like the chef's kiss scene. And you don't put it in the little show description. Like, come on, what are you rookies over there? Let's go. Also, do you think podcasting, like it's now become such a joke term, especially in these shows, like a podcast, a podcast. I want us to find a new name to call podcasts because I feel like it is sometimes turned into a joke, buzzy word kind of thing in these shows where it's like a roll of the eyes when you hear podcast or when people ask you, did you listen to this podcast? And they're not a podcast listener. They'll just roll their eyes. Like we need a new name potentially. Um, so previously on Vanderpump Rules, we have this uh, Lala to Lisa from a couple episodes ago of like, I'm just a bitch in these streets trying to rebrand and get a sperm donor. And little Lala's like, feed me, bitch, feed me. And then Lala to Brian at Cryobank. Now, Brian from Cryobank, I think this is his third episode. The poor guy is like a cartoon character. He is always in the same outfit. He's, I'm Brian from Cryobank. I wear this white button-up shirt with these pants, these khaki pants I tuck in. Anyways, she lets us know that she's going to throw a party uh, because her daughter was conceived out of love and I'd like to bring in a different form so that the kid knows we were all there, which, um, hell, hell yeah, I'm in support of that. On the after show, she did make a joke towards uh, Randall Smemet about uh, going like, listen, this new baby was way better to conceive than what it took to conceive with ocean that means randall ain't laying it down in that bedroom he ain't laying it down in those la la streets she was not satisfied uh lisa de sandoval i think it would be the gentlemanly thing to do to give her the space and sell the house and sandoval's like or a one of us can keep it lisa come on dude ariana and a scene crying to lala and sheena I put so much of my life and my money and my time and making this my dream home. And I never did anything to him. Sandoval's band manager, Jason, in another scene, have you heard from Raquel? And Sandoval's like, I haven't heard from her in a few weeks, dude. I just want to see her. My penis wants to see her, dude. Sandoval in a talking head goes, I'm still very much in love with Raquel. And Lisa to Sandoval, I spoke to Raquel at length. Oh, I was with Nick Lane, and, and I said, oh, pardon me, Nick, we're, we're, this steampunk thing that we've got going is amazing, but I need to take this call from Raquel. I spoke to her at length, Tom. It's over. I mean, like, it's very over. There are lawsuits about to be dropped, Tom. Um, so we start uh, with this like, kind of poppy, jaunty music. In fact, is this Sheena's song? Like, it's a long road to our dreams, but it's all for me. Believe we can make it. Look in my eyes. These are the best days of our lives. Which is, that's like cribbing best day of our lives from the Vanderpump Rules Dina Dudley theme song, which still hits like a motherfucking fire. Now listen, Coachella first weekend, amazing. Surprise set from Vampire Weekend. You had Olivia Rodrigo come out from No Doubt. Here's my piss. weekend too. You want to get people talking like during Tyler, the creator set, if Dina Deadly came out and sang the Vanderpump Rules theme, boom. I mean, Coachella, I mean, Coachella is done. They can never get better than that. Anyways, the episode begins with Sheena documenting herself in one of her famous YouTube videos. Sheena reminded me yesterday that she has a YouTube channel and I always forget that. And I know it's like really successful because she was telling me how she documented everything at Coachella for her YouTube channel. And I always forget about that. But I mean, I would, I honestly, I wouldn't want to know it for all the cast members, but I want to know everybody's financial breakdowns. I want to know how much they get from their podcast. I want to know how much they get from YouTube. I want to know how much they get from Instagram sponsored posts. Listen, I am hammered off of Chili's espresso martinis. Thanks to Sheena Shea and Katie Maloney right now. So, uh, I mean, I want to know how much they got for that. I mean, there is a lot of money flowing around. And I would love to see year to year some financials. I think that would be a fascinating episode. If uh, Sheena, if you're listening, could you give me all your financial statements for the last 10 years? Anyways, they're at Kyle Chan's store to shoot the Good as Gold music video with her band, the 27s. And what I'm seeing, because like Kyle Chan has like this gold background and the stairs. So it is kind of a perfect place to shoot. But in my Vanderpump um, weird mind, all I can think back is the season finale of last year's Vanderpump Rules at the something about her kind of launch party that then led into the uh, the Sir or Tom Tom fight. 
was that before that, remember, Kyle Chan had a party and Sandoval Schwartz went with Joe and Raquel. They were there all four together at Kyle Chan's store. And I have pictures from that night in front of that gold wall. So in my mind, that's what I'm thinking about when we see this. Um, Lala and Ariana arrive. Lala, you know, Brock's there. He's like, it's been a day, guys. It's been a day. We're doing a music video. Yeah, guys. I've got to tell you, um, just for everybody listening, watching, I'm still getting comments, which is awesome that new people are discovering the show and either liking it or passionately hating it. But I want you to know, I understand Brock doesn't. I understand that's an Irish. I can't do his accent. So that is how I do Brock. I, I still am getting comments of like, that is actually an Irish accent and that is not, pro I'm like, I am so well aware, but I really love the, I love, I mean, I love it. I just want you to know, I, I know, I understand. Anyways, they're uh, talking about how they all look amazing. And Sheena's like, uh, I just got Katie's text. What the fuck? And Lala's like, she's not coming. And they show Katie's text sent to Sheena with a picture of Katie in bed. And she says, I'm not coming. And Sheena's like, why? And Katie's like, death deathbed my body aches my head hurts but the, the her in like i want to see katie's camera roll of how many shots she took to get the perfect shot of her just like because she looks gorgeous like just like uh, uh like the lighting's right the makeup's light right it just it looks just like ah uh, oh goodness i can't make it but she looks she looks fabulous like she looks like if this is the deathbed it is a beautiful deathbed Sheena, uh, oh, Sheena's like, so I was like, wait, why? Like, what happened? And she's like, eh, deathbed. I love the way Sheena says that. Sheena and the talking head says, I mean, are you really sick? Are you trying to avoid Lala after the big fight? Because last week at the Foxfire Lounge, you know, when all the girls night, girls night, it, they were all out there. Katie was talking about Joe and going, hey, you don't have any relation to Joe. You don't know this girl. The girl's nothing to you. I'm something to you. So why you got to go like feel bad for this chick? And Lala's like, because I'm motherfucking soft right now, Katie. Let's get in a cage match. This is Lala at her softest, bro. You want to come at me? Well, you're just about to get a load of softness. You feel that? That's a light breeze. Because I'm soft. I'm Lala and I'm soft. Katie's like, it's not making a lot of sense. And Lala's like, then I don't care. I'm fucking soft. So that was the flashback from last week. It is funny, though. I just want to keep pointing out. Like after that big fight, to me, I mean, maybe that was a big fight to them. It just like Katie was kind of monotone as she is sometimes. And Lala was like, ah. so to me, it wasn't a big fight. I mean, is there a world and go with me here? Is there a world in which Katie just didn't want to come? Is there a world in which she was like, I'd rather lay in bed today? Is there a possibility of that? Because, but I will say we have Ariana there. Ariana's showing up for Lala. Ariana's a dog in Lala's fight, you know? Sheena says, well, we got a music video to shoot. I got to go change. Um, Ariana's like, okay, well, let's all change. I'm going to put on jumpsuits. The camera's people, they're ready to shoot. And Sheena's like, let's roll this shit. I'll open Pandora's box for you. I'll bring the rocks for you. We're going to down the line. And the director's like, I want to hear you sing this one. And Sheena's like, when I, this is Sheena's behind the music. When I recorded Good as Gold, I never could have imagined that 10 years later, I would be doing a music video for it. But after being back in the studio with the 27s, I just realized how positive music has been for me. It gives me a creative outlet to just let my feelings out. And honestly, I couldn't be happier because we're good as gold. And the girls are jumping and dancing. They're pretending to sing on microphones and play the drums, all sorts of wackiness because we're good as gold gold beautiful you'll never make me hate that song i love that song at my funeral play that song like honestly like you know when like the pole bears if there is that i don't even know how i'm gonna do it i haven't really planned this but now maybe let's just plan it together good as gold we do that at some point we'll play good as gold maybe we'll start the funeral procession with the Vanderpump Rules theme, you know, like these are the best days of our lives. And people will lightly chuckle in the audience because like, oh, he's dead. This isn't the best days of our lives. But, you know, that's the kind of ceremony it'll be. Uh, hopefully we'll get Ken Todd out there to be like, oh, God, these are eyes in the casket. Oh, God, yeah. um, has anybody done a Vanderpump Rules theme funeral? Will I be the first? Uh, I'm really joking, actually. Please don't use this. And when I please don't pull this clip, please. OK, anyways. So we go to a scene over at DJ James Kennedy's house in Burbank. 
where James is doing the dishes. Also, I want to say they give a shot to the sky where they show a Southwest airplane in the air. And I'm like, oh, amazing that this has to be fake because Southwest Airlines don't actually make the air. I'm still really my I'm still really ticked about Southwest. Like I did miss my grandma path. That's so, so dark. I miss grandma passing. And I listen, I know it can't be changed, but like they diverted the plane. They all like I got stuck in Vegas for a night. What a weird thing. So it was like, yeah. Also, is Southwest advertising on this show now? Because I've now seen multiple. I, I get that it's in the flight path, but like. We like a, I, I get that it's in the flight path, but it is like that's a Southwest. That's like free advertising. Thank God it was on like Spirit or something. James uh, is uh, palling around with his dog Hippie. He's like, sit, that's a good boy. And now he's like, James, you have to come listen to this. What? It's insane. Apparently, Rachel went rogue on some podcast. That's where in my head I put in on so bad it's good, but it's it's Bethany's. And um, I will say in the Bethany Frankel of it all, it cracks me up. Just her whole bit, just her whole, her whole, not scam, but it's like, like a grift of some sense because Brittany was, I mean, uh, Bethany was all hot and bothered, like bravo, bravo, reality reckoning, reality reckoning. So she's got all these lawsuits in motion. She's like gotten her team of Avengers. You got, uh, you know, Faith. You got uh, Brandy Glanville, you got Bethany herself, you got uh, Rachel, you, you got a who's who of people that have separate lawsuits coming at Bravo, all represented by the same powerhouse law team. But it is interesting when you're complaining about the toxicity of reality TV, but then on your own podcast, you are doing similar things like this. And it's even pointed out on the after show, I think by Tom, even Sandoval is like, well, dude, then it's like, Bethany, like Raquel's complaining about being youth, but like Bethany, like youth in her too. Like, <laughs> I like that it was like a tip of the hat of like game, game recognizes game, Bethany. Uh, touche. You have one up to me with your podcast in using Raquel. <laughs> I see you out there. No, but it is interesting now. Bethany, I did the story on Monday. She rebranded her podcast to just be divorced. And now she is going in to the details, the nitty gritty details of her divorce um, fight with Jason Hoppy. And it's getting wild. She talked about trigger warning her miscarriage and saying she was glad it happened and all of these really details. But it's like, this is the toxicity that would have been shown on a reality show, but they didn't even show it on Bethany getting married because it was too dark. But now you are revealing that sort of toxicity on your own podcast. So you, aren't you propagating the thing that you are speaking out against? You're just putting it on podcast form as opposed to it being a reality show. Like, I'm honestly asking that question because I sometimes get confused of like, isn't this part of the toxicity that you are complaining about? Anyways, James is like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And Ali's like, She's like blaming hippies behavior on you. Like, what the fuck? And James is like, she thinks she has this whole platform where she's just going to talk shit about me and make me seem like a bad doggy dad. And it's ridiculous. I mean, there was a lot said. There's a lot been said even in the lawsuit. James was brought up in in the Tom Ariana lawsuit. Uh, you know, there was instances talking about Tom and, uh, you know, Graham, a.k.a. hippie and behavior towards that. What we can go by is what we actually see with our own eyes and what the show is presenting. And it's that DJ James Kennedy seems like he really loves being with Graham. Like this is, you know, we're, we're just seeing moments, right? But it seems like he genuinely loves being with this dog and around this dog. I, I don't know. I was talking about, I was on Mary Payne's uh, Pink Shade podcast. Uh, so go check that out. I really, I dig Mary Payne a lot. And we were talking about this and I just, I keep thinking about the concept of forgiveness, even with Tom Sandoval. I think Tom Sandoval makes it rough because he is not sorry and he is angry. So it's hard when somebody uh, is angry at you for being angry at something that they did. So that's a hard place to start with forgiveness. But is there a world in which we grow as people? You know, is there a world? And I said, on Mary Payne, I, like, I don't know the answer. Like, I want to believe it, but I, I sometimes don't know. I don't know. I don't even know for myself. So it is, it's, it's one of those things, you know, but what I see with my eyes is that like, looks like a really good dog. Dad, Allie looks like she's a very incredibly sane person. So it's just what we see on these shows. Lala now over at Kyle Chan's is like, 
they're all talking about the podcast now. It's like, hey, do you feel like you're banging out after that podcast that just dropped today? And Sheena's like, I literally been going since like 7 a.m., girl. I haven't listened to anything. I've only had people text me. I have so many texts right now. I am tracking so many locations, but I'm like not even able to catch up. And Ariana's like, it's like, what are you doing in regards to the podcast? Because legitimately, I think us as a fan base, we're like, what are you doing? And Lala's like, what was it about? Like, I didn't see much. And Ariana's like, I mean, and she was like, she says you were just acquaintances at best. And Ariana's like, well, that's funny because our Instagrams are filled with us hanging. Like, what are you talking about? And Ariana in a talking head is like, Rachel and I spent a ton of time together. Um, we also then now get into a game of flashbacks with uh, Rachel's birthday one year earlier, uh, you know, it's legitimately one year earlier where this was the camping trip for Rachel's birthday. And, you know, we had the galaxy light and the tents and Santa was like, Oriana and I got you a gift, dude. And Rachel's like, what? Shut the fuck up. These are all beautiful vintage glasses. <laughs> Me and Ari, Tom's actively hooking up with this girl. And he's like, this is for me and Aria. <laughs> and then later he's like, hey, it's just for me. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Aria, no, I picked him out, dude. Uh, I'm just giving her credit because I'm still pretending to be with her. She doesn't have any idea, right? <laughs> uh, Rachel and I talking heads like, these are like my true core people. These are my forever friends. Said, forever friends. So her own words are being used against her, which by the way, uh, Coca-Cola Christina Coca, who was on the show on Tuesday, you know, that's what she does so brilliantly with her, her uh, TikToks and stuff is she uses their own words in regards to pointing out certain hypocritical traits that people have on that show. But this is one right here is we're using Rachel's words. So Rachel, this is part of the thing that she was defending on her own Instagram, which we'll get to uh, probably at the end of this show. But it's like, okay, so at the time, there's a lot of things that go into a statement like that. But like, I would really love, and I don't know if she's answered this directly on her podcast, is these are my true core people. These are my forever friends. So let's break that down. At that time, did you really feel that way? And at that time, did you feel that way knowing you were currently sleeping with Tom Sandoval? So in that sense, did you really think, oh, truly fuck Ariana? My forever friends are Sheena and Tom, and I'm pretty sure Ariana is going to be cut out of this, and I'm going to make it so that these truly are my friends and Ariana doesn't exist in this world? Like, you know, I know when you're in this kind of love lust thing, you're swept up in so many different emotions and thought processes. And I'm sure Tom was implanting thoughts into you as well as his PP. And I do wonder then what was your actual thinking when you would go to bed? And I know you were, she was, you know, admittedly drinking a lot and potentially taking a lot of substances. So that would quiet those voices potentially. But when they were clear, what were they saying? Like, how did you see this working out? Like, were, was that a true statement? These are your forever friends. Ariana continues in a talking head. When she says we weren't that good of friends, it's either her telling herself that just so she feels better about what she did, or it's her saying, I really didn't think a fucking shit of Ariana. And that is it. That's really at the end of the day. And I want Rachel, and I'm sure she will, because Rachel will speak about all of this. This keeps the Vanderpump Industrial Complex going. You know, she, you know, releases things in her Instagram and I don't know, Go check it out if you want. But Rachel, listen, at the end of the day, you do have to like come at this in a way where it's like, which one of these was it? Because Ariana did. So what, what I'm led to believe just from your behavior afterwards and talking about it in retrospect is that you really just didn't think she was, you didn't really think of her as kind of a person. And, and I'm not saying that's okay, but I'm saying it's potentially understandable because you thought you were in love at the time with this dude that was like throwing love at you 80 miles an hour. So I, but I think that's it. Cause at the end of the day, you just, you, you wouldn't be able to reconcile that. You would have to think like, Oh, well fuck Ariana. Like she's kind of a joke. Right. I don't know. I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts about this. Also, by the way, I forgot to do this in the beginning. I want to, God, uh, Juliana Carosa took the notes for this brilliantly, as always. Juliana, thank you. She, I mean, she's the, one of the best people that, that that I work with. And so thank you, Juliana. I'm so sorry that I just remembered that right now. Um, uh, I was just in, in my own little Delulu, as the kids say, world. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Brilliant, as always. Sheena, now in this scene, is like, she's like, 
She said, like, I had like some savior complex and that our friendship was equally beneficial. And as far as how much I helped her, she helped me. And then she's like, I paid rent. I paid the bills. I'm like, bitch, you contributed a thousand to my $4,300 rent. You didn't pay for parking. You didn't pay for cable and you didn't even stock toilet paper. And you had sex in my bed. The fuck? Now, this is the thing, too. Raquel, you're getting into some sticky situations here because at the end of the day, I know Sheena offered you that. So, you know, you took it. But then, you know, in the after show, Sheena kind of says, and then you texted her again and said, can I do it for another thousand for another month? Can I do it for another? And then Sheena finally had to say, hey, we're getting rid of this apartment. We're moving to, you know, we're moving to the Marina Del Rey place. So at a certain point, you know, even if you've now come to regret what you did, you know, it's it's a little tacky to then complain and talk about it in a certain way. At the end of the day, this was extended to you. And, uh, you know, it's not defending yourself. Like, it's hard to defend yourself when you were getting, you're getting such a steal. I do like that Sheena kind of also infers that it's like, you didn't stock toilet paper. Like Raquel was like, and that girl be shitting. That girl be shitting. Like, man, that girl went through the TP. <laughs> she was like Brittany around the stingrays. She be pooping this Raquel. <laughs> Raquel is like borrowing Starbucks napkins because she won't like, she don't want to avoid toilet paper. Like it is wild, but it's like, you're losing the plot a little bit, Raquel. Like you, these people did all do these things for you. You might now in retrospect regret a lot of it, but it was done for you. So you can't directly shit on the Sheena of it all. It's like, girl, these things did happen, you know? Oh, we need a, we need, did anybody do a black light at that place before Sheena moved out? Anyways, back to James in that scene. He's like, anything else I should know about? James is relatively cool. Like I thought he would be losing his flipping good God mind, you know, but I love DJ James Kennedy too. He really, and on the after show too, he's like, he finds podcasts very silly. It's come on. And it does get a little ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I realize that, but it is funny that he won't even bother to listen. And that's sometimes the good way. Don't put yourself in front of your pain. Like Sandoval's out there listening and I'm not diagnosing him as a narcissist, but it is interesting that he wants to listen to people talk about him, even if it's bad. I'm like, what does that do for you, man? Like, what does that legitimately do for you? Um, Allie's like, well, it just says like no accountability. She says that she was just upset after your breakup. She wasn't over you. She never actually loved Tom, which is funny because that's not what she was saying last summer. And we flash back to the reunion where Rachel's like, it was almost impossible to turn away from. And Andy's like, and you were in love. And Rachel's like, yeah. And back to Allie. Allie's like, well, I wonder how he feels, meaning Sandoval. And James is like, he invited me to a studio space tomorrow where he's practicing with the band. He offered for me to open for his band at the El Rey. I do also want to mention that Allie just said that, you know, she wasn't over you, DJ James Kennedy. She never actually loved Tom. And I imagine in that moment, DJ James Kennedy was like, damn right. Once you go DJ James Kennedy, you never go back. I knew that one with the mustache couldn't even bring a little pinky finger with the power that DJ James Kennedy brings to relationships and everything that he does. Are you kidding me? I'm the top man. But he had to play it off because Ali's his current girlfriend. He's like, okay, okay. But he's like, oh, hell yes. All right. James says, I understand that Tom has lied to me as, as, as have I. He goes, he goes up. He's like, as have I in the past to him. Okay, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to figure out my relationship with Sandoval. I'm trying to figure out our friendship. Was it ever real? Do we have anything salvaged? Do we? The big, deep, eternal questions is, you know, what's up with the universe? Is there a God? What's the deal with DJ James Kennedy and Sandoval's relationship? The things that we all stay awake wondering about. I think at this point, you know, DJ James Kennedy is smart. I, I think he knows this, but it is funny that he kind of dangles these talking heads of like, what's it? It's all bullshit. Like, no, like, no, th this isn't friendships at all. Period. End of story. You know? And so it's, uh, James had just uh, complained about like, what is his relationship with Sandoval? And he's like, I know, Ali, I'm like so past opening for the fucking band, but El Rey is such a legendary venue. So I was considering it. Now, the El Rey in Los Angeles on Wilshire Boulevard is to me a legendary venue. I have so many amazing memories of 
that venue in particular. I saw Ben Folds there multiple times. I saw Sleater Kenny. I saw Countess Luann. I've seen so many people over my decades in Los Angeles at the El Rey. It really is a magical place. But I also want to point out DJ James Kennedy opening for this band. I've seen him open for Tom Sandoval and the most extras. And that's also where he met Ali Dali, his love. Oh, my equine beauty. Nobody is as beautiful as Ali Bali. That's where they met opening. So, you know, I, I, I like that he is considering. But yeah, he is past the point of opening for, the, you know, for Tom Sandoval and the most extras. And it is so funny that this episode in particular aired the week after he literally played Neon Carnival, which is the number one party after Coachella to go to. And Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey were making out next to the DJ booth. I mean, that's iconic. And really, you almost feel bad for Sandoval again of like, dude, when it comes to that scene, and it's like, yeah, DJ James Kennedy now, whether you like it or not, he has worked his way up as a DJ. Like, it really is. I got to tell you, I kind of, I'm proud of the dude. Like, he really worked, like, he he did it. Like, all those little nights at, like, Sir and all of this stuff, building, building, you know, setbacks. He really kept his nose to the grindstone. So I think that's one thing. When you just consistently do the work, you know, people might try to take you down in all these other ways, but they can't argue with you showing up and doing the work, which I feel like in terms of the actual DJ, and he's done. So it's it's really wild. Anyways. Ellie's like, can we like brighten this up? It's like really depressing. He's like, what else? Well, Lala's doing a sperm donor party, which is so cool. Like your friends get to help pick out your baby. That's crazy. That's cool. So we go back to Lala and, uh, you know, Lala's talking to Ariana and goes, Hey, I have a question, Ariana. Is your home like available? Cause you have one of those still, which is actually coming in handy now. This is wild. Now, really, we already knew that it was going to be at Villa Rosa. Like that's already, so these are little stage scenes, but I, I think it is wild after complaining about Ariana to still be in the house, to even participate in a scene where you're even asking like, girl, if that was your whole point, it's like, why would I, I like, if she's like, if she tells Sheena last episode, like, girl, I'm over it. Get the fuck out of that house. Why would you then approach her to use the house? Uh, Ariana's like, um, I don't know that I can, like, it's a hot mess now without Anne, because remember Anne is gone. And now we have the new male assistant, which is uh, Tom Sandoval 2.0 but with the mustache, um, <laughs> it really is. I, I, Ariana should be like, uh, no, Sandoval pretty much uses that for his creepy pool parties right now. Like, can you imagine that? And also why would Lala want that bad juju of like, this is where Tom Sandoval told like, you know, 21 year olds, like, Hey, I was thinking about going to Burning Man, dude. Are you into that stuff? <laughs> yeah, I'm single, dude. Huh. My ex is my roommate. I, I, I crush up potato chips and put them under the door. <laughs> and Billy Lee's like, oh, so funny, Tom. Amazing. Anyways, the camera shows life without Anne and it's endless clutter and boxes. So all of the mess from Ariana's room has now made its way down into the entirety of the household. But we also know this is Sandoval as well. But there is just things scattered. All, it, I mean, it really does look like a bomb has gone off. And I truly wonder, like, is this truly the, the reality of the situation that Anne was really keeping that place together? But Anne, Ariana's like, but I would have loved to do it otherwise when I when I have a new house. And Lala's like, then I can host my next sperm donor party there and ariana's like hey you can get inseminated in my new house if you want like ariana fully going yeah girl i support you like fully and in talking heads full support of lala i mean listen i just want to point out the difference in approach and that's what i'm still trying to make sense of anyways it would just be great if you can get inseminated at my new house if you want. Tom's like, if I keep the house, dude, you can get inseminated in my pool, dude. That's what I've been doing 24 seven, just inseminating people in Valley village. Lola and I talking that goes, this is a monumental moment in my life. We're like picking my future child. Who's going to be a part of my life until I die. I want to take the science jargon out of it a little bit. We flash back to the cryo bank from the field trip from last episode. And the, uh, you know, the, our, our new favorite character, Brian, he is pointing out all of the sperm donor vials, which I think would be just amazing if they just did. The editors should have done a troll where they put like Sandoval and like Schwartz's face and like maybe even Peter and just throwing them all in the mix. Like any one of these guys could have donated sperm at any point. But I do like taking the jargon out of it, showing how this works. I think this is a very real storyline fully in support of Lala. And I think this is 
great and demystifying a process. I don't know why anybody would have a problem with her going about it this way. I think it's awesome. All for it. Uh, Lala continues in a talking head. I'm trying to figure out little ways where I can look at this new baby and be like, you were brought here out of so much love. It may look different, but love is love. Hell yeah, Lala. Um, anyways, Lala says she's going to, um, you know, talk to Lisa and try to, you know, just tell her she's going to do it there. And, uh, you know, by the way, I wish Sheena would have offered the Marina Del Rey little pad. <laughs> like you do it here in the front yard where we always see the one shot of, um, anyways, back at James, Allie's like the, the sperm party is going to be interesting just cause <laughs> I just love that. We're like, that's us. This sperm party is going to be interesting just cause Lala's like really venting about Katie. We flash back to one day earlier, a paintball where Lala's like, and like, it's very clear because like, I know my friend is unhappy. And Allie's like, right. And Lala's like, I know my friend is unhappy for a long time. And little Lala's like, she's fucking miserable, dude. Allie is like, they're just both such intense personality, James, that like, they need to work it out. And James like, mm-hmm, I agree. I agree. In James's mind, he's literally just picturing opening up at Coachella. He's like, what would I open up my song with? What would I do? Backstreet Boys. Yes, yes, that's right. Um a soft song by the way the music in this episode is wild this is a soft song it's like to get what you want you gotta give all you got yeah going high speed i want it high speed keep going high speed we're at schwartz's apartment in valley village this old joseph she is gone she is out we see a diagram of valley's astro astrological reading hanging on the fridge uh we also see uh the little photo of joseph um, so she is still with us in a sense. Schwartz is talking gibberish with his two dogs that he shares with Katie Butters and Gordo. Um, Gordito, baby, baby, Gordito, baby, 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 baby. He's talking to his dogs while he sits on their dog bed, which is a huge dog bed, which is, these are two smaller dogs, but I do think that Schwartz, I like that Schwartz is comfortable more on the dog bed. I don't know what that says, but I like that he is on the dog bed. The dogs are on the sofa and he's like, you're all I got. Just me and the boys. Ah, oh, you guys, Gordo and Butters, you're the only ones that truly get me. Actually, no, Tom Sand uh, Tom Schwartz has fully come out uh, with his new girlfriend, his, his 24-year-old girlfriend. They've been dating about six months, I think he said, on Watch What Happens Live. Very happy. He said Katie was even nice about it. But I, if he's happy, I'm happy. Very young. But listen, they went to Coachella together. Fine. Great. I mean, but that's got to really after the Joe thing too, but people, you know, I don't know. Anyways, the door opens slowly and Sandoval sullenly walks in. He's sad. He's sad, sad to ball. He's sand, sad, sand to ball. He's like, what's up, dude? What's up? What's up, dude? What's up, dude? And, uh, he barely, I want to point out that he barely acknowledges the dogs, Gordos and butter. Like, oh, I thought dogs. Because it's very interesting later on when Hippie the dog comes into the rehearsal studio. He's like, Hippie, what's up, dude? Like, you know, very performatively, but this is like, oh, what's up? Well, hey, dude. George's like, what's up, dude? How's it going, dude? How's it going? There's a handwritten note they shot shoot to on the, the fridge. It says, Hi, Buck. Um, Joseph called him T Money, so Buck, like, I love you. Dollar, like, money. Ha, get it? that's great that was juliana carosa right there schwartz is like sorry about the fridge slim pickings i've been making it a point to keep my fridge like beautifully socked like well merchandised so like everything is uh, 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 lately but it like i kind of fell apart the last few weeks <laughs> my slogan is like clean organized fridge fucking chaotic everything else in my life sandoval sits down he's like sorry dude i'm like Really shell shocked right now, dude. What's going on? <gasps> Raquel went on a podcast. Um, I just listened to it, and it's just um, there's so many fucking ad breaks, dude. Like half of that thing was ads. Like, what was Bethany thinking, dude? It's like shitty content, dude. I would love it. I was like, what am I fucking listening to here, dude? It's like way too many ads. Like there's no content at all. She's not even asking the right question. She didn't even watch the show, Schwartz. No, he's like, and she, dude, I'm listening to it, Schwartz. And she's like, I wasn't in love with Tom. And she's acting as though she's like, somehow she's acting. <laughs> she's acting as like, she somehow got it worse out of everybody. <laughs> Ha! 
<laughs> this reminds, this is this is like the scene with Lisa Vanderpump earlier in the season when she was like, "It's over, Tom." She thinks that you're not good for her, and he's like, "What? What are you? What are you talking about?" I hate. She's acting like she's acting like she somehow got it the worth. I mean, this is wild, dude. Like, whatever you think about Raquel, she literally went away to a in like a mental health facility where she got her phone one time. I mean, like, dude, like, b- breathe. Like, I get that it's a shock that you're, you know, like that that this all of a sudden happened and she's turned against. What do you mean? I'm not good. What? Where is she getting this? In? Those people, those trained therapists are poisoning her against me, dude. Everything has been on the up and up in this relationship. I would have done anything. I fucking lied and cheated in the last. For, for the, I was with her nine years. I did that for her, dude. I didn't want to do it. You think I wanted to do that with Ariana? She's a beautiful flower. You think I wanted to? No, dude. That's Raquel, dude. She made me, dude. She's a minx. She's a she's a, a temptress, dude. And now to hear her on Bethany Frankel, of all people. It could have been worth, dude. She could have done Nick Viles' podcast, dude. It could have been worth. But Bethany Frankel, she's like, I just like that. He's like, give me serious. Like, she's acting like she got it the worst out of everybody, dude. Nah, dude. I got it the worst. I'm still here collecting a paycheck that I renegotiated for Vanderpump Rules. I'm getting legitimately paid right now. He's not getting dick from that podcast, but I'm getting it worth. Like, remember, Bethany didn't pay her for that podcast. Bethany does produce her actual podcast, though. Anyway, Schwartz just, you know, you can tell Schwartz when he's like, oh, fuck, man, we're going down this road. He's like, um, oh, well, um, back to the fridge. Um, I like to know. He goes, I mean, um, you both got it bad. He does. He's like, it's great when Schwartz is even mystified. He's like, oh fuck, dude. And Santa was like, well, I made changes to myself, dude. Like thinking that, and now the tears are flowing. Ah, ah, tears, dude. Do you see these? Camera, get a tight shot, dude. Tight shot. I'm seeing the scene in my head, and I'm picturing a tight shot on my face, water rolling down my 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 eye drops, my uh, my eyelids. George is like. Yeah, I'd be like us versus the world. Maybe one day that she would like, she would see um the hard work that I've done to myself, dude. And she would appreciate it. Dude, I've done ice plunges for her. I'm journaling consistently, dude. I'm doing breath work where I orgasm in my house, dude. I'm doing this all for her. I'm drinking Heineken light. I fucking hate Heineken, dude. That doesn't even give you a buzz when it's not with the alcohol. Do you even realize that, Raquel? Dear Diary, tough day, dude. Frankel's podcast came out. Four parts, dude. So hard with my attention span. I kept having to run to the bathroom because I had so many laxatives in me. All the things she said. I legitimately thought she was going to praise me. I really did. I thought it was going to be like some kind of foreplay before she came back and we bone zoned again. But she badmouthed me, dude. It's like I can understand like badmouthing Ariana could like fuck her pins and batteries. Right, Journal? But me, dude? Dude, you know, Journal, out of everybody. Because you know, I write in you consistently. Like that's like tough, dude. Anyway, keep it real, dude. Have a cool summer. JK, love you. Tom Sandoval. Um, This is wild. And by the way, okay, so let's take this serious. There is obviously that part that Sandoval probably genuinely believes this. He's so enveloped in his own feelings that he has blinders on to the outside world. So he is in that me, 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 me and not taking because the one thing you can say about Bethany Fry like is Rachel was trying to communicate things 
but you just didn't agree with what she was communicating because it goes against the narrative that you told yourself in your head. Sandoval in his head in that New York Times article, that horrible New York Times article, even says it with his own words, is that now I picture my life as a reality show. I picture living scenes in life three times, once when they actually happen, once doing the talking head, and then once when it gets released to the audience. He lives his whole life like that, even off camera. And how could you not in certain ways? Because you're 11 seasons into a show. But I think in his head, he had, he had done this all differently. He had this storyline that it would generally, it would be us against the world, dude. Dude, everybody hates us, dude. But we get our own storylines. We do breath work together. We do cold plunges together. We don't have to hang out with Billy Lee, dude. Kyle Chan sometimes, sure. But like, you know, we do that and we build and we show people how awesome and rock stars we are. Galaxy light team forever, dude. That's he wrote that in his head. He directed that in his head. And he tells that with his own words that he does see life like that now. So I think that just it hurts because it goes against not even just the love feeling, but the narrative that he had written in his own head about all of this. Like, well, Fucking cheated for nothing, dude. Nine years for like nothing. Come on, dude. In a talking head in his Zara suit, woman Zara suit, he goes, I wasn't fully ready to give up hope until I heard it from her own lips. And now I have. I go through all that and like not even give it a shot. Like, what was it all for, dude? What was it all for? In the scene with Schwartz, he's like, I don't understand how she could think that I was anything with somebody who loved and cared about her. Like, I'd do anything for her, man. Would you not lie to your ex? No, dude, no. I'm going to have to still lie to her, dude. No, I can't. No, that's ridiculous, dude. No, dude. Would you sell the house? No, dude. Come on. Don't be crazy. But I would do anything else. Anything, dude. Would you stop wearing women's clothing? No, dude. Like the cut of it fits my body, dude. I'm ripped right now. You see me on special forces? Oh, man. I put my body through insanity. Anyway, Schwartz is like, anywho, um, huh. Regardless what she says in a podcast, like she probably just wants her voice to be heard one last time before she goes and pursues her new life, dude. Whatever that looks like. But it's over, man. It's been over. Something that we all have said and the old cast has said. So, you know, Schwartz is in this moment being a good friend to Sandoval as he really has been the entire season. He really has stood by Sandoval's side. I don't think you need to pat him on the back for it, but you can't argue that he hasn't. Um, but also, I love this of like, just like, let, you know, go let Raquel do whatever she's going to do. Let her start her own life. I think they all didn't realize that she wanted to be still in this whole atmosphere. Like, I think, you know, when he says that, it's like, let her just ride off into the sunset and just be a normal person. It's like, no, she still wants to be involved in this mess. Anyways, a sad song uh, plays right here. It's like, and I'm falling, though I can't afford to leave. Leonard Cohen, eat your heart out. It's a new day. We jaunt on over to old Tom Tom. Lisa is there. Oh, where's Tom and Tom? I'm at Tom Tom. And we have our buddy Logan Cochran, the bar manager there. Logan, Ariana's BFF. Uh, you know, some people have come down on Logan this season. Uh, Freddie Mellencamp. Uh, you know, always just a really genuine guy. Good guy. He's the guy also that broke the penis flute. But don't worry, the penis flute got put back together. Penis flute, all safe and sound. But also, if you're somebody's BFF and you find out this happens, a few penis flutes are going to get broken. Period. Logan didn't like lay his hands on Tom, laid his hands on a penis flute, which is, I guess, an extension of Tom. Lisa's like, they're coming in to show me the cocktails they want to put in for brunch. Um, so they're doing brunch now here. She's like, Tom Tom will never be pump and nor would we want it to be because we're burning that place down for insurance money. It's got a very different aesthetic, very different than my new one, Wolf. In Lake Tahoe, me and Nicolaine have gotten the sexiest, most sumptuous. Uh, anyways, this is about Tom Tom. There's no reason we can't develop the restaurant part and add brunch to the menu. We want to keep the spirit alive. Will you talk about spirits, please? Sweet release, let me go. Oh, I can't believe that. Uh, <laughs> 
they have taken the pump sign and they've put it like, it's weird. Like I, I was driving past it a couple weeks ago. I noticed that it was like, Oh shit. They put the old pump iron sign right there. And I got to tell you, it looks really kind of tacky. Um, you don't, it, and it kind of confused me too. I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah, I understand. I understand. Like you don't know, like it doesn't, it just, it's it just kind of looks cluttery. Don't do that. I do like the Tom Tom has brunch. Now I will say I've been to a couple of brunches at, um, pump in the past and they were oh it was fun great great it was a lot of fun always so schwartz walks in he's like oh my friends all right i just juiced the shit out of some cocktails if schwartz ever says i just juiced the shit out of some cocktails all i think about is gordo like the last time he was juicing and they compared it to gordo's poo and so i just i really i'm just like Schwartz, you know schwartz hasn't washed his hands and i just i'm like well let's maybe just chill on using whatever schwartz juices lisa kind of said her, she's like oh, oh could we could we just get the hair out of the way first uh, are you, he's his bleak blonde hair he's, are you going to keep the hair or should i shave it off for you dear boy and logan's like well there is something about the bleach blonde and lisa finishes that turns you on logan does it get the blood flowing in the underpants and logan is like yeah and lisa's like well it's working then keep it young logan here wants to jump your bone schwartz you're turning logan on oh behave <laughs> come back here and let me watch <laughs> i'm joking i don't even let kin touch me with ryan bailey's dick <laughs> where's sandoval He's supposed to be here at 1.15. What's the time? And Schwartz is like, it's time to get ill. No, it's 1.45. This is not okay. Not showing up. Well, can I say something on that note? I'm a little worried about Tom. Have you heard about Scandaball? No, he goes, after that podcast came out, so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey, I think he listened to it and hopes that she would say something like, imagine thinking it was still going to go good. Like, that's it too. Like, yeah, imagine, LOL. Like, who would imagine? Who would be like, oh, dude, I'm about to get my ass slathered with ass kissing right now. Because this is going to be a four-part thing where she tells Bethany that I'm a gentle lover and I bought her cool gift. Come on, dude. Anyways, Schwartz is, uh, you know, they're like, yeah, she didn't do that. Lisa's like, who cares? Oh, who can right now, as long as she's safe. And well, who cares what she's got to say? Honestly, you know, basically like she didn't agree to do the show. She's dead to me. And Schwartz is like, yes, yes. And Lisa's like, right. She doesn't love Tom. I think she's been open about that. Please. I'm begging you, Logan, touch this man's dong. Um, Schwartz is like, uh, I told him yesterday, I said, listen, the affair is over. You know, people are moving on, which is what Sandoval wanted people to do. And Lisa, uh, leans and, you know, gets more candid. Of course, dear boy, she's been away for three months. Uh, she just had electroshock therapy. I just, I thought he was in a lot better place to be honest he brought me ice cream at one point please i know he's diddling half of west hollywood according to billy lee and schwartz whispers like well he was in a better place he was here he is like just like old time sandoval walks in the door he's like what's up dude so sad sandoval you're late yeah but like really late for me. Yeah. Don't make Lisa Vanderpump late. She's got a jizz party to plan tomorrow. Sandoval not taking off his uh, <laughs> cataract glasses. Sorry, dude. And George is like, here, I'll make you guys some fucking drinks. And Lisa reads like Sandoval's attitude. He's like, you want to do this? You don't have to do this. Sandoval ignores her. He's like, I brought them strawberry. I brought them strawberry puree, dude. And then I was just thinking, imagine that fucking mess that he made making that strawberry puree. Cause you know, Anne's not there to clean it up. So it's just like fucking strawberry guts everywhere in that kitchen. Poor like Maya, the dog, you know, it's like, uh, the dog He's like, uh, it smells sweet. I should eat it. But last time I ate something in this house, I literally had to go to the hospital, 500 laxative pills, but it does smell sweet like strawberries. Uh, what am I to do? I'm a dog. You know, you know, it's not cleaned up over there. And anyways, Lisa's like, you want to talk? And Sam's like, uh, Sure, I guess, dude. George is like, I'll give you guys a second. I want to get some ice. Why are you so unhappy, Tom? He said you're really unhappy. You were listening to the podcast. So bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. Yesterday. Sam was like, yeah, dude, I'm upset. Why are you listening to it? There's so many ads in it. 
I'm listening to it because I want to know what's being said about me, Lisa. It's bullshit. So why do you even invest in it? I don't know, Lisa. I don't know, dude. I don't know where thoughts come from out of the sky, dude. And Lisa's like, then don't listen to it or listen to This American Life or something nice and jaunty. Sam was like, I don't know, dude. I'm going to fucking listen to it. Another one's coming out tomorrow. You're going to listen you gonna listen to that? Yes, dude. I'm gonna I'm subscribed now, dude. I have to. So you're you're going to torture yourself. Yes, I'm going to, dude. You can't not make me, mom. Okay, all right. Yes. Lisa and talking head goes, I don't want Sandoval to start spiraling. <laughs> yeah, imagine imagine I don't want him to start wearing a knife around his little legs. After we just got him to a place where we're starting to even out, what can Raquel possibly say that's going to make anybody look at her in a better light? I love it. Oh, that little dungeon trash bag. Ah, little fart face. Ah, ugh, gross. Lisa's like, okay, what's happening with the house? Ariana finally responded to the offer, and she um, she wanted to accept, though. So, well, that's good. Yeah. So are you going to sell it or are you going to buy her out or what? Um, well, I'm taking just a couple days to think about it because the offer I gave her was over two months ago. And like my thoughts have maybe changed since then. I've recently started listening to a podcast and it's kind of made me think a little differently. No, I just think this is like so funny. You bitch and moan about this. She finally gets back with an actual counter offer. If you watch the after show, like legal, all this stuff, he's like, well, maybe everything changed, dude, because maybe I was full of shit to begin with. And she fucking called my bluff, dude. Well, so fuck that, dude. No, 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 Crazy, dude. Crazy. Okay, this is from the after show. Now, this is from a great account, Glorified Gossip Girl. Her original account on Instagram, I think, got taken down. So she has a new account where the girl is spelled G-U-R-L. But she uh, posted the clip from the after show talking about the financials of the house, which is a little boring, but I think it does provide context and clarification on this. So I think it is worth playing for you guys. So here, listen to this. You heard from Logan, who overheard Tom talking to Lisa, that he was having second thoughts about the house. It's frustrating because selling the house was the plan in March. And this all could have been done. He's now having second thoughts. And he might want to sell the house, which is what I wanted from the beginning. I could have been living somewhere else. This all could have been, you know, sold, split down the middle, 50-50, call it a day, the end. Because there's really nothing that needs to be done to the house to sell it. Not a damn thing. The fact that we're, you know, months and months later and still dealing with it because speaking of dum-dums, didn't realize that selling the house was the best idea, which I could have told him and had been saying from the f***ing jump. And guess what? I'm right. Like, shocker. No sh Now you're having second thoughts. Because then you, you only just now realized what it's going to actually take in order to buy me out of the house. Don't just hand me cash. Like, you have to refinance to get my name off of the mortgage and the HELOC loan that I signed off on to approve for you. When you do that, you lose your 2021 refinance interest rate. And now you have to pay 2023 inflation interest rate. And you didn't fucking think about that before, did you? And now it's like he's realizing that it's going to take a lot more than just handing me a check and I pack a fucking backpack and leave to yeah. make this a thing. Well, so that to me is... Bam, that's fascinating. Also, I can just imagine Sandoval dipping out when he heard HELOC loan. Like, oh, dude, my brain hurts, dude. HELOC, what? Huh? But that's it. There are real things. It's not just I made her an offer. He didn't make her an actual offer that was put through a lawyer and put through all of these financials, you know, like Ariana did with her counter offer, which she goes into the after show and talks about as well. So I think that's, you know, it's like just saying something. Tom will always just say these kind of big ideas. But then it's like, no, the actuality of that is not right. But like, no, but right. Fuck Ariana still, huh? No, come on. She was not going to lose out on the money that she actually put into this. And that the interest rate thing, that's huge. You know, having to refi it now, the interest rates now, as opposed to pandemic interest rates, completely different. You are going to have to pay out the ass, which obviously he didn't count on. So um, 
in a talking head, Sandoval goes, Ariana took so long to get back to me because she can't wipe her own ass. And now I'm on the fence of whether I want to keep it at all or can keep the house at all. If I have to refinance, dude, it would be more than double of what I'm currently paying. And Lisa's like, sell it, Tom. It's too much house for you. The upkeep, everything. You've lost Anne. It's a pigsty. Sell it. Get out. Call it a day. And George is like, yeah, like I'm, I'm going to be done with her for life. And Lala walks in like, what's up, yo? Anyways, Lala is there uh, to talk about hosting the sperm donor. And she's like, Lisa's like, what do you want me to talk? What do you want to talk to me about? And she's like, may I host my sperm donor party at your home tomorrow? So this is already kind of the stage thing. We already know it's going to be at Lisa's. They've already planned it. There's catering. The crew already knows where they're going to for the next day. Lala's fully like glammed up. So this is like a connector scene. And Lisa's like, everybody's going to be jerking off in my back garden. Huh? This isn't a line, but I really thought she was going to be like, Ken already does that on the daily. <laughs> Behave. And uh, Lala's like, the only thing that comes from the straight men is the cum. Guys aren't invited. Oh, I don't want you like throwing sperm around in my house. Ken does that on a daily basis. <laughs> Rimshot, tip your waiters. And she's like, Lisa, it's going to be very beautiful. I have the catering. I've got the balloons. You'll get each packet and you'll all vote on the donor. You mean everybody else is going to choose your donor? And she's like, yes, including you. She tears up talking about really exciting. And Lisa's like, I give it my blessing. Um, so then a song plays underneath is what you started and your pride in disguise underneath is where you'll find me high in. We arrive at the dungeon of ariana's and tom's house in valley village production shows that they can barely get in because there's so many boxes everything's in transit oh my god ariana is finally she's like cleaning the the countertop it's like there's a mess everywhere and ariana's like maybe i'll just uh look like i'm cleaning on this countertop right here sheena comes in with brock they come in with like boxes and she's like i got more boxes outside for you that were delivered and she's like oh my god more boxes want to add to the stack over there and Ariana is like, oh, my God, Logan was at Tom Tom earlier. He said Tom's having second thoughts and he might want to sell the house, which is what I wanted from the fucking beginning. And the house could have been sold in fucking March and I fucking could have been out of here. Ariana in a talking head goes, maybe honestly, when he got an actual look at what it would take to buy me out of the house, he realized that financially he just can't fucking do it, which I could have also told you from day one. It's just like being right is hard sometimes, especially when it's always the case. It's hard when women are right. We don't like to accept it as a society. Ariana's like, oh, also, so apparently he's going through it over a podcast. So bad let's go with Ryan Bailey. Um, Brock's like, wow. And Sheena's like, I don't know it was three parts either. And Brock's like, we've got part four dropping too. It's called part four. How do you like them apples? Because Sheena's written a hit song called Apples. And so Brock being, you know, like a, you know, advertising major is like, yeah, we're going to ride the wave of Bethany Frankel. It's going to be a Apple song. After you listen to Raquel and Bethany, you're going to turn on Apples by Sheena Shea. Anyways, they're laughing. And Sheena's like, I've got a new song with the 27s called Apples. And then we see Sheena practicing it a day earlier at her home. And Summer Moon is with her mom. And she's like, from a Ferrari to a jet. Uh, I thought that you knew better and her mom's watching but summer moon is just completely not focused and i need her to get it together because that's another hit song and sheena continues in a talking head the song when i first wrote it was only about raquel but then we wanted to extend the second verse and we just had some lines we added that were so directed at tom and sheena's like and then i'm gonna post the lyric video on youtube and ariana's like hell yeah sheena finishes in the talking head i'm just trying to take a traumatic experience and turn it into a nice piece of art very therapeutic and very catchy hell yeah sheena this is literally, I mean, what Sheena does with Lyric, it's the Lennon and McCartney of our day. It's just that she's one person. She doesn't have, I mean, I think she's a perfect blend of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. She doesn't, but she, she does this all herself. So I'm all for it. Brock's like, well, how can we help you today? You mess of a person, Ariana. What's the plan? What's the big picture? Do you want to help with these boxes? And she was like, I know my mental state is best in like cleaner spaces. She's like saying this gently, like you're a pig. You have a lot, you have a lot on your shoulders, but you seem like you're doing amazing on Instagram and have a great boyfriend and everything looks amazing, but there's a lot you're dealing with. <laughs> they show several photos of Ariana doing amazing. I love it. She was like, but you're a mess. Look at this pigsty. She was like, so I just wanted to come over and see like, what can we help with? Like, can we clear out the dining room table? Like I see it's like a mess right there. 
and she's like, well, that's not, there's a couple of things that are mine, but a lot of stuff is like, I, I don't, I don't touch it. You know, um, Sheena being trying to be a good friend here, but I do think I just think it's very funny. Let me go through your stuff. Let me, let me see what's going on here. Sheena talking there goes, I've always known Tom and Ariana's house to be on the messier side. And we flash back from 2014 to 2017 with like trash dishes, cigarette butts. But if it's so messy now that she's not even wanting to have people over, it worries me Then maybe she's falling back into a dark place. <laughs> Why isn't Ariana having any sexy single parties like Tom? And I don't want the messy house to be a reflection of her mental health. I mean, this is one of those. It's a nice gesture. The reality of this, I mean, like I legitimately think that Ariana probably does need help, but it's one of those kind of storylines that you're like, uh, Sheena knows why Ariana is not throwing parties and having people over. It's a weird situation. And that's why it was so weird that Tom did do the super sexy singles party and the birthday party at the place. And Brock's like, you said here, Ariana, and we'll get your house in order. Mom and dad are here. And we've got to, we're only going to charge you half price. Uh, they start working and Sheena's like, we can put some water bottles away. And she says, those aren't mine. And Brock's like, what is yours in your house? And Sheena's like, who likes room temperature water? I mean, I'm fine with it. Ariana's like, Sheena's doing Tom's assistant's job. And she's like, it's like the holidays over here. We've got Easter. We've got Christmas because there are packages from Easter and Christmas that still haven't even been opened. And uh, there's perishables. There's food. And uh, they're just like, it, 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 it's wild. It's a wild. I imagine all the free stuff they get anyways, just sent to them. I mean, it just must be overwhelming. And especially on the heels of Sandoval, Sandoval, Ariana and I talking to goes, now that I know I'm for sure going to be moving out of this house, I'm not going to be like unpacking things and putting them away. I'm just going to receive a box, stack it neatly. When I move, it's going to straight into the moving truck. And it's one last thing I have to pack. I mean, that does make sense to me. And also listen, Ariana's messy. I'm messy. I mean, like I legitimately, sadly have no issue with this because I'm a mess. Um, and it's a very sad state of existence, but it's just, I am. So I'm like, yeah, man, it's, uh, okay. But why well, Sheena and Brock come help me, man. Start with my car. Anyway, she was like, these are cookies. Oh my God. These are cookies. And she was like, it's been sitting there for six months. And I was like, not six. And they put up three months, whatever trash is on the table. I would feel better if we just throw the trash away. And Ari is like, this is so wild. Sheena whispers to Brock. Shoes don't belong on the dining table because we see Sandoval shoes. And she's like, uh, those, those are Tom's. You know, you don't know what you're touching. It can be all sweaty and gross. He takes a lot of laxative pills. You, you don't want to touch that. And Brock's like, listen, we got a kid. We pick up shit once a day. We had little summer moon shits. And she was like, I've touched worse things. <laughs> I used to date Mike Shea. I clean up after him every day, Brock. Sandoval is no different. And Brock's like, excuse me, I'm not that bad. Come on, come on. I wish Sandoval was like eavesdropping like he did a couple episodes ago of like, I can't believe they're talking about my sweaty undies, dude. It's so unfair. Okay, we are at a new scene. We are at the scene. We are at the studio where Tom Sandoval and the most extras are practicing their songs the music of the gods tom sandoval is wearing a dipped out shirt because dipped out dude rachel did raquel dipped out remember dipped out from last season i don't even think tom was selling this so i don't know if he just made it for this episode or he was planning on selling it or somebody gave it to him but it is um what is that it's completely uh tasteless it's horrible what a doofus Man, like, let us weirdos wear shirts like that. You participated in this. It's not funny. It's not cute. And it's super weird. But I want to say, like, we see all of his Fruit Loop necklaces. And I got to tell you, the money he is shelling out, he's got this huge studio rehearsal space, the full band. We've got video projection. We've got smoke. I mean, you would think this was Michael Jackson or somebody. He's got in-ear monitor. And you know he loves all this accoutrement, but, you know, it makes him feel like this real artist. And I, it's kind of like, man... Now, the band, you know, these are all talented musicians. Like, at the end of the day, all joking aside, these are like people that really do know their stuff. But it's like, work on the music first and then, like, the smoke machines and the video projection. Maybe think about that later. But it's like, you throw all, I mean, it's very Sandoval. Throw as much um, pizzazz on top of a lump of coal, in a way, in a sense, if that makes sense. Um, we see him singing and I will say Tom hits a note and they have a shot of one of the sing, the, uh, female singers that gives a look like, Oh, ow. Oh, Oh my God. Um, so this song is like, we don't want to sit up with Papa. You can have it. You with 
wands out in the sun. Armageddon is just no fun. If you doubt it, then close one and make pretend I'll justify. <laughs> I've been so high. Superstars, fly! Uh, did anybody like? <laughs> this was very Molly Shannon, Mary Catherine Gallagher of like superstar. Sometimes when I get nervous, I put my fingers under my armpits and then I'll smell them like this. Superstar, dude! Yeah, superstar. DJ James Kennedy and Hippie are watching from the side. <laughs> I just love it. It's like. <laughs> We're so high. Superstar. Oh, dude, that was good, man. I felt that one, dude. You see the smoke machine working. It's like a full thing. And uh, you know, Sandoval takes out his ear, ear, in-ear things. Like, what's up, dude? Dude, I just rocked this fucking house that I paid for, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you see all these band members? I pay everybody's salary. He does. He does. I mean, really, I will say that. Like, he pays these guys fully. I mean, like, he does take care of them. If you want to give a positive out there to Sandoval and Sandoval's like, what's up, James? Kind of like, you just saw me rock the house, dude. What's up, dude? What, what's up, dude? You see my power, dude. What's up? And James like, how are you? How's everyone? And Sandoval's like, hippie. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Last time I saw you, my boat was in the air. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's like acting really happy to see hippie. And, um, you know. I, a hippie, you, you just feel bad. You know, hippie, it just must feel really scary for hippie sometimes to see somebody that, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, hippie, no. Oh, hippie, no, 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 not the band, too. No. Oh, people hate when I do that. Anyway, it's that was hippie, ladies and gentlemen, hippie. Um, so, uh, you know, he's like, oh, hippie, yeah. And James like, how about this little guy? He's been the talk of the town today because of the podcast. And Sam was like, yeah, dude, apparently. So have you. You've been the talk of the town the last couple of days. You all right? You know, that's kind of a nice gesture. Like, yeah, you, you, you all right? Now, they're off to the side by this wall, and the, the band is just in the background. And Sam's like, it's been a rough couple of days, dude. I can't lie, dude. Not like with the initial scan of all situation where I lied for nine months with her. Anyways, no, I can't lie. It's been tough, dude. James in a talking head is like, yeah, you know, part of me does feel bad, honestly, because I've, I've been there. I learned that lesson with Raquel. They play a clip of Raquel on shenanigans with Sheena Shea one year earlier. And Raquel's like, you've seen James be verbally abusive and he hasn't been there for me emotionally as well. Um, I will say too, you know, like everybody has their story in a relationship. And DJ James Kennedy feels one way about it. Raquel obviously felt another way about it. Um, but I don't want to paint Raquel as, like I said earlier, this temptress. You know, there were reasons that Raquel, we all see that her and DJ James Kennedy did not work. Like him and Ali seem like they work way better than him and Raquel ever did. Like Ali seems like a real person. Raquel at times seemed like she really did have that fembot Bambi. I didn't love Lala calling her a Bambi eyed bitch, but I do understand where that came from. You know, James continues in a talking head. I know how much he's been going through as well in the scene. He's like, you, you want to talk here or what? No, dude, we can talk over here. Yeah, dude. Uh, Ariana would slap me if I said that too loud, you know, because in his talking head said, I know he's been through a lot as well. Santa goes, oh, I really tried, dude, to look out for Raquel, dude. I'm realizing now that I fucking cared for her way more than she fucking cared for me, dude. And James, like, you, you really think that you, you, okay. Oh, here we go. Um, okay. Santa was like, I fucking know it. I mean, dude. I'm listening to this shit that coming out of her mouth. And I'm like, it's fucking bullshit, dude. It's so goddamn disrespectful. She used me, dude. And she's throwing me away. <laughs> this is like, this is wild. This, I have left the planet. That is the most in like, like she used me and she's throw. She used me, dude, to get on Bethany's podcast, dude. That was a plan all along, dude to get off the show, go check into a facility for three months, and then do Bethany's podcast, dude. Use me, man. Use me to completely throw away any kind of reputation she had built up to that. How dare she use my good name, dude? The Sandoval good name. 
And James is like, well, I just want this in my past, right? After the breakup, I went and lived my own life. And it just seems like all of this just comes like to haunt me. I don't want to sit and talk shit about Raquel. I'm done with the talking shit. I'm done. So, I mean, this is a very, uh, who knows if it's like, because he's like, oh shit, what's going to come out next with Raquel? So I don't want to perpetuate anything more. But I think what a grown up way to approach this of like, no, I don't want to talk shit about her. I've done my thing after I broke up with her. I went and lived my own life. I figured it out. And Santa Ball's like, huh, not me, dude. I'm not, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to bathe in this pain. Like he's like, look, I didn't even give any sort of like closure, dude. And Jim's like, fuck closure. She's working on herself. And he's like, yeah, she's working on herself when she broke up with you. She was selfish during that time. She was selfish with getting involved with me. Oh, uh, she said back in the day, when she asked you to stop drinking, flashback to 2019. If you can't get your shit together, James, then we will break up. She did it with a thought that you wouldn't be able to do it. So now we're getting darker. Now we're throwing down a dick measuring pain contest of like, oh, well, you remember this? She told me this. We're revealing now secret information that Raquel has allegedly told DJ James Kennedy or told Sandoval about DJ James Kennedy in the relationship. But I like that Sandoval's not fully turned against her. You know, she was selfish during that time with you in the breakup, selfish with me. It's just all selfish, this girl. But James is like, well, she also said, uh, Sandoval, on the podcast that she was never in love with you. Huh? Boom, mic drop. And Sandoval's like, oh, I know, dude. I heard that. I heard that. And like she got with you because she wasn't quite over me. So, you know, I wouldn't put too much thought into that one, buddy. You know, I don't believe you guys were ever in love. I think it was a fuck fest for six months. Boom. Truth bomb. Dude. No, dude. We would sit there for five hours and talk. I mean, you thought Bethany Frankel's podcast would ba was bad. Imagine getting a, a audio feed of that. Do you ever wonder, dude? Just looking up at the galaxy light. Do you ever wonder where we come from, dude? We're just little specks of dust. We're dust in the wind, dude. You ever think about that, Raquel? Can I see your nipples again, please? Um, no, I just like sometimes we would sit in silence for five hours before she let me touch her breath, dude. It was real. What are you talking about, dude? No, dude. How we, uh, we it took so I mean, it would be hours sometimes before the mushrooms and Molly would kick in, allegedly, dude. No, dude, it wasn't sex. It wasn't just sex. Stop it. Take it back, dude. No, take it back. Anyways, James like, you were just horny, extra horny, because you were, weren't getting it from Ariana, so you would, like, literally go get it from Raquel. You don't know, dude. You have no idea, dude. You have no fucking idea what you're talking about, dude. I would go to her house, and we would spend five, six hours together. Like, we would play Monopoly, dude, and we'd go last forever, dude. If we had sex, it would be like for a little bit, dude. We would talk the whole time. Also, I love that. It's like, I could barely, like, I was like, it would just be for a very little bit, dude. It was like, that was a big thing for me because I was like, I liked it to last longer, but I just couldn't do it, dude. I couldn't. I was so out of practice, dude. So out of practice. Very sad. Anywho, and James is like, you're a liar, though, Tom. You're a liar. I'm not, dude. I mean, that's just facts, though. And like, it's not the fact, dude. It's your opinion, which are not facts. Well, no, Tom, it's her opinion, too. She said it. Oh, okay, dude. Okay. I mean, what you and Oriana had was true love, bro. Do you not remember back in the day? And said all starts to yell, you don't know, dude. You don't fucking know, man, dude. No, no. And he's like, you looked at me dead in my eyes for years, talking about how much you fucking love that girl. Oh, I, I did love her, dude. God, it's like you forget, bro. It's crazy. Shut up, dude. No, seriously, though. You just forget your fucking memory. You rewrite history in your mind and have fun with your fucking band. I'm not opening you for the fucking El Rey because I've moved on to bigger and better things. This is a joke to me. You see band members just like awkwardly watching like, Hey, are we still gonna get paid for today? With uh, uh, should I put this donut down? With are we are we back from break? What? Uh, <laughs> James is like, all right, gotta go. Bye. And he walks off with hippie. And uh, James and talking to me goes, he just can't let go of the past, can he? I was waiting for him to like get a clue, or maybe he never will. I can see it now. Like he'll be seventy-five, still at the rock and roll bar on Sunset doing karaoke. Like. 
boom, Dick Flute comes out of the pocket, used to play this one on national television. Bloop, 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 bloop. They show Sandoval tooting on the Dick Flute. It was brilliant. The editing, brilliant. The talking head, brilliant. It's just like, dude, just shut the fuck up. Oh my, that, I mean, Sandoval is stunned. You can tell he's bruised. He's like, go push some buttons. We'll push some buttons on your laptop, dude. And James turns like, what was that? What? What was that? You hear me, dude. You hear me. Say it to my face, bro. Say it to my face. I said, go push some buttons on your fucking laptop. Don't call my band a fucking joke, dude. <laughs> I will. I will. Thank you, Sandoval. Thank you. <laughs> Emmy time is here. The scene will be put forth in the iconic scenes of Vanderpump Rules. You got to, when DJ James Kennedy and Sandoval, this almost rivals certain Sandoval Jack scenes from years past. Like I'm the number one guy in the group. This is a great scene. It has everything that you want. DJ James Kennedy nails it like a laser where I almost believe I'm like, this is when I talked earlier. Can people change? This scene makes me believe people can change. The guy nailed it. And I think the guy, I mean, like sometimes we can't take a critical eye to ourselves, but you can take a critical eye to others. James has nailed it. Everything. And I, you know, back to like, it was a fuck fest. You guys were just horny. No, dude, you don't know, dude. That's it. Exactly. That's it exactly. It was all horniness. He was living in this world of of like kind of that that fake, not fake, but that initial love, that like lust and initial love and like galaxy lights and, you know, Coachella shit and, you know, just that like, let's take some drugs and like cuddle and talk about like new, ex you know, experiences so we don't really know each other. And that whole thing when you're getting to know somebody and it was all this, it wasn't real. It wasn't reality. So Tom is living in that galaxy light. He's looking up at that. Face. But remember, the galaxy light was created. It's a machine. It's not real. It's like a beautiful image, but that's all it is. It turns off. You have to live real life. And like Tom and Raquel had to go live real life. Tom is still in that galaxy light kind of candy coated nightmare that he just can't break free from and realize and admit to himself that maybe everybody's right. Maybe I am wrong. One of the worst times in your life is when you realize that you can't trust your own thoughts. And I think sometimes we've all experienced that at a certain point is that we lie to ourselves. We just flat out do. But I mean, DJ James Kennedy, I hear it's so bad. It, uh, it's good. We salute you. We are proudly saluting DJ James Kennedy for his work in this scene. But I just think like, to me, it's bad for Sandoval, but he just got his ass handed by, to him by DJ James Kennedy. And for me, this is Sandoval's origin villain story to me. Like you can just see, like, this is, this is Darth Sandoval, right? <laughs> The scene ends and a song plays. I won't let you go. I'm keeping your heart on hold. Hurts very hard. I know. Don't need a reason to start again. And now we're at the Jizz Fest. Jizz Fest 2023 at Villa Rosa. Hanky and Banky are going to do sperm donation as well. Okay. So we are at uh, Jizz Fest. And uh, it's, uh, you know... Listen, Lisa's place is beautiful. Um, we see that it's, uh, you know, food, flowers, Vanderpump Rosé, the only wine to drink. The caterer has prepared a Who's Your Daddy menu. Do you want some Who's Your Daddy chicken tendies? Um, anyways, uh, people are going to come. They're going to play Pin the Sperm on the Vagina, a classic game that we all have had so much fun over the years. We see a diagram of a woman's uterus. Uh, men, please freeze frame this because a lot of people really don't know their way potential. From what I've, from what I've heard is, I was like, wait, what? What's going on down there? Oh my God. This is, this is great information. I hope they talk about this in the reunion. And by the way, the men should legitimately be the one that should pin the sperm to be way off. It's like, oh, what? Lola on a talking head goes, I'm just a couple of hours, uh, hours away from choosing my baby daddy. So everybody's excited. Ariana's there. Katie's there. Everybody's there. Lala's like, we are shopping for fucking cum today. I didn't make up that line. She said it. Little Lala's like, fuck yeah, now we're talking, bitch. Um, Allie's there. Allie talks to Katie and goes, hey, I wanted to check on you, um, in on you. And Lala, because I missed the girls' night the other night, I guess it sounded heated. I wasn't there. I just heard you know, a paintball that it sounded uh, like you were uh, a little like miserable and getting upset about a lot of things very easily. And Katie's like, I'm miserable and getting upset about things easily. Like who said that? And she's like, um, Lala. 
Uh, I'm definitely not miserable. I'm getting upset about things easily. I'm tired of the same dumb shit getting brought up to me for no reason. Allie's like, yeah, oopsie. Did I do like Allie, by the way, is still a reliable narrator. Like Allie can get away with these. Like, in fact, I would give Allie the ball. If you want things to happen, she is somebody, because at this point she hasn't really fumbled anything. This is the first time she's might've like misspoke or used the wrong word, but I trust Allie so she can make things happen. And I think the cast trusts her too. So she's a good person to give information to, to give to another party to potentially start something, you know? Um, and Katie and I talking heads like, since when did Lala start talking shit behind my back instead of just doing it to my face? Well, Katie, that started, um, when did Lala get up on the show? Anyways, Katie's like, I'm chilling. I'm good. And I was like, yeah, I hope you guys are good across town where Schwartz stops over at Sandoval's house, Darth Sandoval. He's just brooding dude. And now he has a knife strapped to his thigh, a actual knife. He's like, I want to wear short, super short shorts, dude. So you can see my cool knife, dude, that is not going to freak out anybody because I'm completely stable, dude. I'm a stable genius. Sandoval's like, Maya, dude, come here, Maya. Schwartz enters. She's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Maya. Maya's like cute, happy to see Schwartz. Sandoval's like, what's up, Blondie? And Schwartz's like, like a fucking villain over there. Because Schwartz is like, yeah, black tank top, short, like, you know, large commando knife. He's looking at Schwartz like with a handheld kaleidoscope. Like, I, I'm telling you, this is his villain origin story of like, one day they they all respected me and then it all went away, but it was forged in fire. And now I have a knife strapped at me at all times and I look through a kaleidoscope. And she was like, well, kind of a villain, actually. So, Craig, what's up, dude? Weird seeing you here. Like, you live here. Craig, the assistant on tattoos he's wearing the same exact outfit minus the knife like sam was like you haven't graduated to the knife yet dude only i can wear the knife you can wear everything else but the knife dude okay and i'll let you keep that mustache for now but if i decide to go on it's over and uh tattoo craig is like uh i'm here all the time now and schwartz is like look at you guys you match and everything you can tell schwartz there's concern in his voice tattoo craig's like i'm here more than i'm home and schwartz is like you guys a duo now? <laughs> Schwartz is kind of like, you can totally take my place. No, for real. And Schwartz is like, I've been replaced. Oh no. Sandoval and I talking about it. Like I first met Craig when he was a bartender at Schwartz and Thandies. We did. We saw him last year in a scene and, uh, you know, they flash back to that scene and Juliana in the notes wondered if there was an NDA somewhere. Cause we never heard one word about Sandoval not being a part of Schwartz and Sandy's anymore on the show. And we never hear about Schwartz going to work there. Nothing at all. Do you know anything on this? I do know a little bit about it. I think Sandoval is still a part of it. They are throwing watch parties there every week. In fact, Mary Payne, like I said, once again, I'm on the pink shade podcast today. And she went to Schwartz and Sandy's when she was in town and they have like, you know, you'd only stay at a table for 90 minutes. She was there on one of the watch nights. Uh, they're there watching. So I think, you know, Sandoval is still part of this business, but I think part of it is that like, don't talk us about it. It's on the show anymore. We want to kind of move away from being a punching bag on this show. Remember like Greg, the, the other owner was like, this is not good. So I think Sandoval is still a part of it. I'm not, I think they wanted to buy him out at a certain point, but I don't think that has happened yet. And it still seems like all systems go. They, I just don't think they want to, they don't want it to be featured on the show as a place where you can film. Anyway, Sam was like, things didn't work out with Ann, dude. The Craig's coming on board. And hey, if anything, this guy can be my stunt double. <laughs> Sandoval, he's much younger than you. Oh, shut up, Ryan, dude. That's mean. <laughs> That's mean, dude. Come on. And Sam was like, hey, dude, Schwartz, look at this. Got my leg knife. Schwartz was like, yeah. And Sandoval just still staring at Schwartz through that creepy kaleidoscope. He's like, I think I'm going to start working on cutting Maya in half. Ariana gets one half. I get one half. We split everything. Now, this isn't funny. Like, there's like, this is the part where, like, I was genuinely creeped out. And I know Tom doesn't really have a good grasp on, like, humor sometimes. And I think he genuinely is trying to be funny. It's just not funny. And it's really scary, especially when you have a knife strapped to your leg. Because let's that's that's weird. I, you know, let's call it, I mean, it's cool sometimes like if you're Rambo and like, you know, you're in a jungle somewhere, but like, you're just, you're in Valley village, you're in a modern farmhouse, you, you know, the knife strapped with the wife beater and the short shorts. It's I'm worried. Like, this is like, this is like apocalypse. Now I'm, I'm genuinely worried for him in this scene. And George is like, Oh dude, that's probably the saddest thing 
while he's petting Maya and Schwartz is literally like, run, Maya, run. So I was like, I'm just going to delay responding to Ariana's email so I can hang out with Maya a while longer. George is like, yeah, I have a proposition, Schwartz. Oh, don't say what I think you're going to say. I will consider. No, 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 no. Keeping the house. No, mm, don't even say it, dude. Don't even say it. Don't even say it, Sandoval. If I had a roommate, dude. And George is like, I knew it, dude. The optics of that are horrible. And Sandoval goes, no, they're not. <laughs> Sandoval. Sandoval just, no, they're, yeah, they are, man. You should be like, yeah, I know, but, you know, like, he's like, he just goes, no, they're not. <laughs> okay, well, problem solved. Schwartz on Bethany Frankel's podcast. I can't believe it, dude. Schwartz turned against me. Schwartz goes, someone would like make voodoo dolls of us and pin them and needle them. And Santa was like, dude, somebody already did that. So it's like, okay, let me just humor this for a second. And hypothetically, what would be my rent? And Santa was like, thick. And he's like, oh, I can't, dude. You pay $4,500 a month at your place. I cannot, Santa Ball, in good conscience, put $6,000 towards something I'm not going to get a return on. I'm not building any equity here. Santa was like, what are you fucking Ariana all of a sudden? Fuck, dude. Enough with these numbers. Santa was like, basically, we'd get a loan. And Schwartz is like, we? We would get it together. And Schwartz is like, oh, I don't like that, dude. They would look at us like two nincompoops. <laughs> hey, I'm Sally at Wells Fargo. Oh, shit. Nope. No way. It's Sandoval and Schwartz. Lock the doors. Lock it. They're going to ask for money. Oh, we got to take this uh, Bank of America, I guess. Sandoval's like, no, they wouldn't, dude. Think about it. And Schwartz is like, okay. Um, Are the girls at the sperm donor party? Like, I like, he's like, think about it. He's like, okay. Anyways, moving on. Are the girls at the sperm donor party? And Santa was like, yeah, dude, they're at Jizz Fest, LOL. Get it? Jizz Fest? Get it? The stuff that comes out of our penis holes? Jizz? You get it, Schwartz? Do you get it? <laughs> Do you see? My knife gets it. Yeah. Schwartz is like, okay. Um, okay, like, you can't, you can't say that, dude. Huh. This knife and this kaleidoscope says I can say Jizz Fest, brother. Flashback to we're going actually over to Villa Rosa again. And so they're going to say, hey, we're, we're, you know, Lala makes this big speech. We're going to pick the donor. She says she's beyond grateful. She's getting emotional already. And she says, listen, if there's one thing that I feel like I'm good at in my life is that I'm a good mama. I don't love the word mama. Heather Holla Thompson. Hey, mama. I'm not a big fan of it, but I will say I agree with Lala. I think she's a good mom. I think all of like, I think Sheena's good mom. I thought it was like kind of livid that Jax like went after Sheena. And I thought that was so shitty, especially with going through what Jax is going through to say something about Sheena's parenting. But they, I do. I think Lala is obsessed with her kid. And I think she'll make a good mom to as many kids as she has. So, and listen, if you have a bad experience like Randall Emmett, uh, this is potentially the way to go because she doesn't want to wait around. She knows she wants to do it now. There is nothing that I don't agree with in this scene. Uh, except for potentially watching Lisa try to pin something on a uterus. Anyways, there, uh, Lisa goes up first and, you know, like, how did I get myself roped into this? Uh, do I want to swallow it whole? <laughs> no, I'm not a swallower. Uh, I got it. I got it. La la. She's trying to pin it on the uterus. And Lala's like, no, you don't. You're in the trees. I can't believe it. I'm in the trees right now. And Lisa just tried to pin the spoon. I can't believe that. Which, by the way, I'm like, why are we even doing this? The fucking donor should be kin. I heard, I heard somebody needed semen on here. I can't believe it. I got picked to be a Lala's donor. I can't believe that. I see that. Did you know? I haven't been in a jacuzzi because it makes my swimmers know I was swim. I'm willing to be a donor. I can't believe that. Oh, behave, You would love it, wouldn't you? But I'm not going to let you. No. Go off into the other room. Okay, go back, go back, go back. Um... Anyways, Lisa and I talking now goes, I've got a blindfold on for goodness sake. How am I going to know where a vagina is? I can barely find my own. <laughs> I've got a full bush. It's very hard to find. <laughs> Anyways, um, there and like Sheena goes, Sheena gets it close to the uterus. You can tell Sheena's very proud. Ariana hits even below Lisa's, not even close. Katie lands above the whole diagram. Lala's like, huh, that sperm is a tummy shot. And you know how fun that is. And little Lala's like, fuck yeah. Lala, I love this, like this beautiful scene. And Lala's talking about jizz and tummy shots. She's like, okay, bitches and guys, let's pick a fucking donor. I want you to meet Brian. We get Brian from the cryo bank. He's in the same outfit. He's like, what's up? I'm Brian. 
Uh, they talk about the donors. Donor one. Donor one, folks. He is tall. He's lean. He's six foot two. Athletic build. He's kind, polite, and friendly. Gentle demeanor. His favorite song is Grown Ocean. And his favorite animal is a lion. All right. And they're like, we're done here. This is the winner part. And for those of you who are wondering, Grown Ocean is a song by one of my favorite bands, Fleet Foxes. So I, I was like, well, that's very, that's a very telling. Fleet Foxes is an alternative indie band, a little folky, a little singer songwriter. Uh, the lyrics are in that dream. I'm old as the mountains still is starlight reflected in fountains. Children grown on the edge of the ocean kept like jewelry, kept with devotion. Superstar. Ah! I don't know. So those are the opening lyrics to grown ocean by fleet foxes. So listen, this is, I, I think he has great taste. I'm with this as well, but they, they go over the other options as well for this because you don't want to just pick the first one. Um, the donor number two uh, education level. He's got his master's in art history. Um, Ariana, you know, says that she doesn't really, the, the donor number two didn't fill out the questionnaire good. And she says like in the future, if anybody does this, make sure you really put some thought into your answers. Right. Uh, donor number three is a major in accounting and finance. And Ali's like, he's smart. And one of his biggest passions in life is cooking. And Lala's mom goes, and you don't cook. And Lala goes, okay, we're not shopping for the man, girl. You guys, just for the sperm. So they vote and uh, they go with donor number one. They they pick it. They they all vote. It's a democratic vote. And she's like, we're doing it. I, I have my baby daddy. Going this route to have a baby is giving me what my heart and soul so badly want. It's very exciting, everything that's happening. She's tearing up. You know, everybody's there supporting her with what she wants to do with this. And I think it's beautiful. Great. Anyway, she plans to have a Virgo baby. So she's going to have this thing happening in November or December insemination. That would put her at an August, September due date. So next summer, I'll be bumping around, which by the way, she was bumping around at Coachella with Sheena this past weekend in Sheena's Shenanigans podcast. I hope this doesn't get cut. We do talk about, I mean, listen, season 12, because I said, hey, is season 12 are like, are we going to have the finale at the, um, at Lala's like giving birth. And she said, well, I did, you know, she's like, it will be right around the time that we would be filling a finale, filming a finale. So I took that to mean that season 12 is as good as gold that we are. People are saying the show's going to end. I don't think the show's ending, folks. Like I've told you all along. And that's just imagine Sandoval fighting in a delivery room. Like, dude, I deserve to be here, dude. I love Lala, dude. Come on. Anyway. So that was a great, scene very positive scene but now we're at a beautiful day in burbank california over at dj james kennedy in his backyard he's playing football with hippie the dog this is what it like they do seem like very energetic together very cute james like hippie it's so hippie chase me oh, oh hey he just like looks fun they go inside and james like hello mr bista mr banks the cat hello ali's like lala's party last night was so much fun oh my god how did that go ali dally it was beautiful. We looked at three donors. What were the things like looks and then job? Everything. No birth chart, though. I said I need to see their birth chart, which is very funny and probably actually would be kind of cool. I mean, I don't know a lot about astrology, but the things I do know, it seems like it really does tell you a lot about who you are, you know? And James like, yeah, right. That's important. Of course. I can't tell if James really believes in this stuff or he like humors Allie. I'm like, of course, birth chart. Of course. Got it. Check. And I was like, they're like, we can't disclose location of birth. And I'm like, that's very important. And a talking head, she goes, all I care about is let me see your GPA in high school and your sun sign. I wonder about the GPA in high school. Like, what does that tell you? Because a lot of people that I think went on to be very successful weren't successful in high school. Anyways. Allie's like, and they said, when do you want babies? And I said, I'm not in a rush. And they said, well, do you ever? And I was like, yeah, I do see myself having them one day, but I'm not like ready. And James like, yeah, I definitely see babies in our future. Ali Bally, like together. Yeah. She's like, I don't know. I just never really felt called to it. You know, like most of my friends are like, no, I want to be a mother. And I'm like, that's so cool. But I never felt that. Like I, I felt that to cats and dogs, but I haven't felt that with a baby. And I never thought about marriage. I, I don't think about that. I don't have a dream about that. I don't have a Pinterest for it with my rings picked out. And James is listening. He's like, right, right, right. Well, um, fuck that first off. And he goes, there are things that I want, you know, and these are things I have worked my whole life 
four and he starts to tear up. He's, I see that future with you and I see kids with you. And it scares me when you say, oh, I'm not ready. And it's all like, it's okay. We've been together for a year and a half. And it's like, right, well, I don't want to add what I did with Raquel, right? And be with someone for five years. Come to find out it was all bullshit and it never actually meant anything anyway. In a talking head, James is teary-eyed as well. I think about everything I've gone through leading me up to this moment. And like this girl that I'm completely in love with is basically telling me that she never has plans to have kids. I mean, like, honestly, it breaks my fucking heart in the scene. He's like, the love chapter for me has just never been what I thought it was going to be when I was younger. Like, you know, you think you're going to meet the person, fall in love and get married and have kids. You know what I mean? That's how it goes. In a talking head, he continues. And I don't even want to think about the fact if she never changes her mind starting back at square one is just a fucking nightmare to me honestly i mean i feel for the guy like listen this is a great scene because ali like i love that she's able to be honest with dj james kennedy and really stick to her guns and be completely honest about it and that there's no fear there there's no trepidation she's just telling it how it is but i also appreciate what dj james kennedy is saying and like he really does want these things but I think it will happen when the time is right. I think it is like work on the relationship. You have so much hysteria around your life because of this show and you're doing so good. Like just keep your head down and work, keep working on the relationship, keep working through your problems. Like, and, and, and when, you know, I love that. I'm like, a, like a, like a life coach. And when that's all done, it'll be the right time. No, you know, like I really, I, I feel for both of them in this scene, but I thought it was a very responsible scene and it wasn't like, fuck you, get out. No, but Allie goes, listen, I am dating you because I love you and I do see a future with you and I wouldn't be with you if I did not. And he's like, all right, all right. Okay, Ali, Ali. Oh, I'm going to meet Taylor Swift soon. So maybe that will do it, please. Anyways, the song plays. We keep coming back to where we started. Don't stop falling. Don't stop falling. We're coming back to where we started. We buzz over to Tom Tom's first brunch, folks. Okay, so everybody's there. The excitement is in the air. Logan is there. Lisa's there. They got reservations. Schwartz arrives. He brought some uh, weird tequila thing. He juiced it home to pass out. Sandoval arrives in a beige polyester women's slacks and blazer and a pearl necklace with a sling bag black purse as one does at a brunch uh but you know listen tom always is on point fashion wise i could never pull it off but good for him schwartz and talking it's like tom tom brunch took five years in the making it's not exactly how i envisioned it with pump on the other side but you know what this is a win James and Allie arrive and, you know, what's up, guys? What's going on? Schwartz continues in a talking head. We've got a great turnout. You know, I honestly believe this is going to be one of our biggest selling points moving forward. What's up, man? And he's this was Sandoval. What's up, man? Just wanted to say sorry for how it was. And Sandoval's like, likewise, man. Yeah, I'm excited for today. Yeah. Schwartz is like, thank you for doing this, by the way. I appreciate it. We appreciate it because he's going to spin, right? But this is like so guy. This is why girls are like better. Like guys, like the gnarliest shit. And they're like, "What's up, dude? Sorry, that's cool, dude. Sorry too." Like it's like it's like whoa. Of like with girl drama in this show, we focus on the entirety of the season. Like we're fighting between Lala and Ariana and Sheena and Katie, and the guys like have the one of the most intense scenes and fights of the season. It's like, sorry, dude. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, moving on. James is like, after talking to Ali, Dali, I have to remember to be the bigger person in conversations. I mean, there is definitely more important things going on in my life right now than arguing and fighting with Tom Sandoval. And Sandoval's like, I feel better, dude. Thanks for that. And James is like, all right, cool. I'm going to set up my stuff. And that's it. It's over. It's over. It's done. Boom. I will say, I mean, this is what I keep thinking about change is that doing really good man Allie talking to him about like having being a grown-up person it seems like he's listening to her it seems like she adds to the conversation i think that's really really great and really positive but i will say man when this guy's sober he has an acid tongue and he can like throw down he's not an idiot i've had a lot of experiences with dj james kennedy over the years even before i did this podcast it, i mean i remember him when he was a wasted dude uh, way back in there. I mean, God, that's gotta be like six, seven years ago. Now I remember, cause I, I really unironically love his song top man. 
And I remember we were all at Sir one night. I think it was a Friday night. And he was outside smoking a cigarette. And I think I was outside. It was just me and him. And he, he was just like staring off in the distance. And I think he was like tanked. And I was like, hey, man, I love that song, Top Man. <laughs> DJ James Kennedy was like, he was like, he took a second. He was like, it is a good song. And I'm like, yeah, it, yeah, it really is, man. It really is. I have another DJ James Kennedy story that I've told in like the first year. I'm not going to tell that here because, but yeah, he's, he's a, I don't know. I, I, I root for the guy. I really do. Anyway, Santa was like, uh, Schwartz says hello to Lala and Katie who have arrived. Sheena and Ariana arrived. At least he's like, I think it's going to be huge here. We're just getting started. Sheena takes her famous video of brunch and the queen. Since, you know, she documents everything for her YouTube channel. Lala to Katie goes, what were the two of you discussing yesterday at the donor party? You and Allie. I didn't want to interrupt, but I was like, can we pick my donor now? And Katie, okay, Lala. Katie's like, well, she mentioned a paintball that you said that it seems that I'm miserable and getting angry at everything. And Sheena's like, she did not say that. <laughs> Sheena is, Sheena and Lala, man, they are a, they are boom. Lala to Allie is like, would you say that verbatim that I said she was miserable? Was that the word, Allie? And Allie's like, um, I wish I could remember the words. I, I couldn't remember. And Lala's like, that's the word she used? And Katie's like, yeah. And Lala goes, did I ever say she was miserable ever? And she is like, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. I was there. No, she didn't. No, I am her lawyer. No. Flashback to the paintball four days earlier. We see that Lala said that she was unhappy. She's unhappy. So unhappy, miserable, very different words. Unhappy is a more caring word than miserable. But since then, just to point out, Lala has called Katie miserable in many posts and other interviews. Lala says, I was going to have a conversation with you because I feel that maybe you're not in a happy place right now. And Katie goes, you're wrong. And Lala goes, I want to know that I don't trigger you because when you said it at Girls Night at Foxfire that you didn't feel like I'm loyal or consistent. Katie's like, it's not that I don't think you're loyal or consistent, but I'm just saying like, I feel like your softness is going to not necessarily you know, going to the, the most deserving people. I feel like you're very defensive with me, Lala lately. And Lala's like, well, I think it's because you and I were inseparable last year and friends go through things and life changes. You and Ariana are like very close now. I really don't know what my place is with you. And I wouldn't even say Katie and Ariana are very close. We don't see a lot of scenes with them, but I mean, the sandwich shop, whatever is happening with that, you know, they're, they're linked through that. But, you know, I do, I'm a big believer in friendships have seasons, you know, is that, right now like i with a lot i closed i've i've closed shop like i emotionally it's hard to deal with people right now for the last seven months or like it's been a while like it's hard like i you know but things have seasons and hopefully i'll be at a better place where i'll be able to be more open with people and around people and enjoy people again you know it's just all kind of change but i do think there is something to be said Friendships do go through seasons because I truly believe next season, Lala is probably going to be great with Katie or even great with Ariana. These things go back and forth and back and forth. Um, so this is, you know, but this is cute. Ariana reaches out. Ariana, by the way, shoveling in food in her face from the brunch. She's like, Aah! I was like, this is how I eat, man. But Ariana like reaches out her hand, like just so caring about what Lala is saying. And I think that's just another reason why I'm frustrated with Lala lashing out at Ariana. And I still want to know why Lala continues. That's not, I get it. Like I have a kid. I get why you guys and Ariana's like, can we have a night when we all lay in one big bed? And Katie's like, I don't like, well, I don't like, well, you're close to this person. So I don't know where my place is with you. I don't have a person, a boyfriend, uh, Katie's, you know, Katie's talking about, I don't have a boyfriend, a kid, nothing. I have all the time in the world. So I don't feel like I don't have time for you, Lala. That makes me feel sad. And she was like, maybe there's one of the things that I've learned in getting closer with Lala that I know she needs in a friendship is just someone checking in on her a little more. I like Sheena's like, I am studying the Lala and I know how to speak Lala. And I bet Sheena is like, Sheena is probably great at checking in on Lala. I bet like, honestly, Sheena, I think is all over it. Katie goes, I see her all the time. I text her. I call her. The reason we're not close is because you don't have a single moment to hang out. Katie in that talking head says, I would love to have Lala as a close friend in my life always, but it goes both ways. It's an effort, not an obligation. Boom. I mean, that makes sense. You might not like the way it's delivered, but it makes sense. Lala goes, everything you're saying is correct. <laughs> That's where this scene should end. I don't take a lot of time to be with you, but I need you to know. See, this is it. She's admitting, I don't take a lot of time to be with you, <laughs> but I need you to know I love you for exactly the person you are. Uh, all I'm looking for is I want us to show up for each other. We've done it for many years. And Katie's like, yes. And Lala goes, let's just get back to that, okay? 
And so Katie emotional shakes her head. Yes. And Lala goes, can we go back to being the spice girls now? And they all laugh and it's like, yes, let's do that. Let's all be together and one and happy and no, but we're not, we're tearing each other down again. Uh, brunch at Tom Tom continues. DJ James Kennedy playing the hits. He's got groupies dancing at brunch in front of him. Um, Sandoval is with, with Schwartz and he's like, I got something from Doug, the real estate guy. He's got another property that we could move into as well, but I'll give you some time to think about it. Like, like Schwartz, like he's like Sandoval's like when he gets an idea in his head, he's like, like after living with Ariana, who is pretty much like an enemy and being able to coexist in that house, I realized that I, and then Sheena walks by, he goes, Oh, Sheena's coming. Be quiet, dude. Don't say anything. Yes. This is, nobody should reveal information around anybody on this show. Nobody should like, it should be, there should be no information being revealed anymore on this show. But like, ever since I got my leg knife, dude, I have a different outlook on life. But um, the, the Schwartz Sandoval thing, thank God this isn't happening. Schwartz is like, hello. And Sheena's like, how are we doing? And Schwartz is like, what's going on? And she's like, I'm just walking to the bathroom. I love Sheena's iconic walks to the bathroom. We've had it earlier this season at Sir. Schwartz is like, are you vibing? First ever Tom Tom brunch? Tom Tom pump? And she's like, Tom Tom pump. How are you? And so I was like, um, I'm all right, dude. She was like, last three days, every day with something new coming out, podcast. And Sheena was like, oh, you know, dude, I feel betrayed dude i feel like ariana <laughs> kind of like ariana might have felt i don't know dude anyway i don't look too deeply into it so i was like i'm not going to get any closure sheena i'm not going to get an email dude i'm not going to get a letter dude she was like none of us are getting closure so i read a song about it <laughs> so i read a song. it came out yesterday and santa was like zoinks what the choice is like i didn't see that i wasn't on the charts she was like there's a couple specific lines and Santa was like, are about our affair. And she is like, open to interpretation. There's one line where it says from a Ferrari to a Jetta. I thought that you knew better. I love the better Jetta, better, not better, 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 B E T T A B. You went from something gold to something not, and you could do better. And Sandoval is giving a side eye. He's like, I am Darth Sandoval, dude. I am turning into Darth Sandoval. George is like, well, that could be anybody she's talking about. And a talking head goes, well, yeah, it's an open to interpretation. But aside from the fact that Raquel used to literally drive a Jetta, I just looked at Kelly Blue Book. She was like, you're not going to be able to hate it. It's good. And so I was like, you feel differently, dude, if you went through what I went through and I was writing a song about you, but that's okay. That's fine. But Sandoval did write a song about Sheena. It's called Superstar. I get so high. Superstar. That is about Sheena, the superstar. Sandoval gets up. He's done. He puts on his cataract sunglasses and he stomps away in his women's pantsuit. He's like, dude, I'm out of here, dude. And George is like, no, oh man, he's pissed. I didn't think, what do you mean? I didn't think he'd like, he's been doing this all season. She's like, I thought you guys like already heard it. Apple's streaming on Spotify. Come on. Sandoval walks away. By the way, Sandoval has his man bag and then he has another bag. It's like he's like going to the airport all of a sudden. He's like, well, time to grab my seven pieces of luggage to get out of Tom Tom Pump Brunch. And he walks out and he goes, fuck this shit, dude. Sandoval and I talking to him, goes, I feel like Sheena and I have like come a long way. We were really starting to become friends again. And then it's like, go profit off my pain, which sets up our season finale where we see that scene in the preview of Sheena is like, do you want to be my friend to be my friend? Or do you want to be my friend because of like show? Schwartz is like, Tom's a little ruffled, Sheena, because of the podcast. Schwartz, let Tom, we get it. Sandoval continues in a talking head. It's just like Tom's going to be like collateral damage in this. It's like, I don't give a shit. I got to put my track out. If Sheena was really caring about like many things, like she wouldn't have done this. Tom, you can't stop art, dude. You can't. Sheena is an artist. You can't stop that music, man. But like, dude, it's just so silly. It's like you guys all do this to each other and you didn't care about Aria. Like, it's like we could go back and forth and it's going to go back and forth until the end of the show. So like, it's you got the hot potato this season. Sandoval turns away, stomps out. Next time on Vanderpump Rules, we see Schwartz and Sandoval in an old school Mustang convertible with rap music playing. It's like, boom, do, do, don't, but don't. And they're like shopping for like houses and they go to a tattoo parlor. I guess they're going to cover up their Katie and Ariana tattoos. And then James is like, it looks like Jaxy boy is coming back to sir. And Jax is there. He's like, I don't even know what I'm about to get into. I don't know what my relationship with Lisa is right now. And we see him walking in the sir and Lisa, you know, catch by surprise. Lisa's like, Oh, oh it's Jax Taylor. Oh, oh my God. 
Charlotte. Come on, you knew Lisa. You know he's coming in. Sheena, very emotional in a scene to Brock, is like, have you ever thought that maybe this is your second chance at being a dad? This is also the scene we see from the mid-season trailer where she's like, something about like, I don't think, you know, do you think we're going to wind up together or something? Um, anyways, uh, Juliana actually put in a side note uh, that I thought was great that I wanted to read to you guys. Things are getting blurred with the girls. Who is, was friends with who? She's like, I'm getting hazy as to who was already friends with who and who is now friends with who. I need a rehash of Sheena's friend journey and with the girls and same with Lala and Katie. How can they all be best friends with each other? But they weren't. It's very muddled. Lala is besties with Katie, but Sheena and Lala are besties. Sheena was always besties with Ariana, but she's besties with Lala now. Katie and Ariana are basically new besties. A lot of bestie changes and convolution. If you ask me, uh, you need a fucking flow chart. So we will be doing a flow chart for Juliana and for a lot of you guys uh, in an upcoming episode, because we do need to break down, but that's just the, the, the name of the game. So I guess we all got to chill out because it is just ever changing. It's just Vanderpump rules, baby. I hope you guys had a good time today. I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, I really do. I hope you did. If you like it, please consider giving it a five star on Apple podcast and Spotify. If you listen to Jeff Lewis live, what up chumps? Um, come join us tomorrow on patreon.com forward slash. So bad. It's good. We'll be doing a live show at 5 PM Pacific standard time. Meditza, Sandra, all of us will be there. It's going to be fun. We can talk about this. I can sing superstar. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, Remember, go listen to the audio podcast. Sometimes I put other things on there that you don't see on YouTube, but I appreciate you being here. I'm beat, you guys. These get longer and longer. I'm so sorry, but hopefully you enjoy it. So maybe it's a good thing. Okay, bye.